Hurricanes weathered every storm and re-intensified the Hurricanes around speed and depth in the backfield and an array of receivers that put fear in defenders' eyes. Washington spirit soar again, too, with a brash young coach who knows that the fate of UW lies in the hands and feet of its magnificent quarterback. The lead dog of the Huskies pulls his team together and points toward an upset. the second matchup of these two storied programs in series history but they do have some history behind it in 91 they had to share a national championship in 1994 the Huskies went down to the Orange Bowl and snapped a 58 game home winning streak for the University of Miami my partner's Bob Greasy two good quarterbacks in this one Robert and uh, guys that get it done in different ways starting with a senior for Washington well if you haven't seen Marcus Tuiasa Sopo for Washington you're in for a real treat he is the heart and soul of this offense. He's not a great passer, but he is an outstanding football player. He needs to play big for Washington today. And on the other side of the football, for Miami, a guy made in the mold of Bernie Kosar, a pocket passer and a young guy. Very tall, very string, the big bird type, very intelligent, making his fifth start only and his first road start. That's a key. He's been very efficient, only two interceptions, 150 or so passes, but he needs to play well today. This place would be noisy. It's going to be rough on him. We'll see how he acts. He needs to play well, too, for Miami. A very hostile environment. As the two teams get set to square off, they're the preseason picks in their respective conferences to take the title. This is a big step toward national prominence. Miami and Washington coming up from Seattle next. They come by boat. They come by car. Some people take the cheap route in. That's across the bridge to the stadium. Lynn Swan, third man of our team with the head coach of the Huskies. Swanee. I'm with Rick Neuheisel. And Rick, this is a big ball game. How do you get your team prepared knowing that they're the underdogs in this game? Well, our kids are excited to be in this kind of contest. Uh, we've talked a lot about both programs having been national champs early in the 90s and now on their way back. And we've got as much chance as they do today to try to get uh, one step closer back to that uh, elite ranking. If speed kills, then what do the Huskies have to do to stay alive because Santana Moss and the Hurricanes have a lot of speed? Well, we're going to try to deflate the ball a little bit, see if we can keep those uh, talented guys off the field as much as possible. And that's going to be a tall order in itself because they've got a very talented defense. Tactical, strategic football game. Good luck to you, Coach. Thanks very much. It should be a good one. And, guys, while everyone is looking for a victory in this ball game, in the bigger picture, this is a game that's important to the Pac-10. Last week, when the Pac-10 opened up conference play against teams outside the conference, are 7-0. It's a big weekend. This game itself, with both teams, as Brad said earlier, looking to win their conferences, favored to win their conferences, becomes a measuring stick for everyone else to look at and will have an impact on the Big East and the Pac-10 throughout the season, Brad. And who knows, maybe the national championship, because the folks in Miami are dreaming of that. Miami won the toss and deferred, so they'll be kicking off and Todd Sievers has got it teed up back deep for the Huskies to Ray Butler and Derek Johnson all set for a big matchup at Husky Stadium 72,500 on their feet both teams off to a 1-0 start but those were warm ups this is the real deal four yards deep in the end zone and electing not to bring it out is to Ray Butler. So Washington will start things off. The Chili starting lineup. Here's the big ones up front. Silvers, Frey's, Ben, Chad Ward, a three-year starter and an All-American possibility. And Wes Call is the other tackle. Wilbur Hooks gets his first start. Has a lot of speed. Elstrom over 100 yards receiving last week. Stevens a great tight end. Paul Arnold, the tailback behind Pat Conniff, who's played with Marcus Tuiasasopo since eighth grade in Woodenville, Washington. And here's the guy that Bob talked about. Marcus Tuiasasopo is so dangerous in so many ways. And he brings the Huskies to the line first and ten at their own 20 yard line going to go to the air on first down straight down the middle tipped and still caught and now a fumble 
Loose ball, they're going to say incomplete. Mike Rump put the hit on Wilbur Hooks, who would have had a catch. And it'll be second and ten. Defensively for Miami. Getting back to those Miami defenses of old. Damian Lewis made in the mold of Warren Sapp. Joseph Walters and Rhodes round out the front four. A Butkus candidate on the inside is Dan Morgan. Moved into Nate Webster's spot. Clark and Campbell flank him. The secondary, one of the best in the country. Blades and Reed are the safeties. Rump and Leonard Myers are the corners, and that's a good bunch back there. Neuheisel's been talking all week about controlling the football. Comes out on the first play and tries a long pass. Here's a quick throw out to Conniff out of the backfield, and he's going to be stood up. A gain of about two, and it's going to bring up a third down and eight, the exact kind of situation Washington did not want to get in on their opening possession. I think you're right, Brad, when you alluded to last week's games. This is college. They do not have preseason football games like the NFL does, but but Nice State and Idaho, uh, good programs in their own right, but right. a different level from these two. Three wide receivers set now as Hooks, Elstrom, and Robbins are in there. Elstrom's the main target for Tuyasa Sopo in a inexperienced wide receiver core due to injury and graduation from a year ago. On a third and eight. Marcus in trouble, dances away, and now finds an opening. Here he goes, and that's what he can do so well. First down, Husky. That thing just opened up for him. He saw that right side open up, and he just took off for it. And there's nothing you can do about it. This was not planned. It was just improvisation, improvisation by the quarterback, Tuiasa Sopa. He wants to throw this ball to the left. Now he says, all right, nothing's open. I'm still looking to throw. I'm just going to run. He has the God-given talent and ability to use his legs and pick up first downs. He's as dangerous running as he is throwing, and maybe even more so. So a first down, a 12-yard pickup on the third and eight. And out to the 34-yard line. Straight ground game, and that's going nowhere. Chris Campbell came in from his outside linebacker spot to make the stop. This Miami defense is awfully good. Their defenses in the past have been in the top five in the nation. This, uh, this group uh, could get there. The, the defensive backs... Uh, some have said that uh, may be the best group in the nation. Yep. Two tight end set for the Huskies on a second down and 12. We're just underway. Washington with one first down so far. That on the scramble by Tuyasa Sopo. Arnold a single setback. He's going to get the call. And still nowhere to hide. Goes down. Might have lost a yard again. Dan Morgan and Howard Clark. The two linebackers in on the stop. Arnold is a young back, just a true sophomore, played a little bit last year. He see he could have bounced that ball outside just a little bit. It seemed like there was a hole to the outside. Going over to the left side, the uh, he would have bounced it outside of outside of 74, called a tackle. There was some space outside. Had some back problems, did Arnold, and didn't play particularly well against Idaho. And he said, I'm not going to use my back as an excuse. I should have played better. And the coaches agreed with him. Three wideouts on third and a dozen for Tui Asisopo. Plenty of time. Fires complete. But it's well short of the first down. Justin Robbins had to make a diving catch. They only got six out of it. And the Huskies will have to give it up. Here's a key matchup. Punt return for Miami with Santana Moss and the good coverage team by Washington. Santana Moss has taken a punt return three of the last four regular season games for the Canes to the barn. And he's back waiting on it right now from Ryan Fleming. Fleming taking his time. Kick that Moss will have to field on the hop and does. Got a little bit of a crease. They close that hole in a hurry. And now the Huskies all over. Fumble, was he a fumble? The football, and they did get it. I didn't see it come out, but... Tyler Crambrink down there with a the football. This punt coverage team for the Huskies is made up of an elite group of starters on offense and defense. Let's take a look at it. There's Crambrink with a hit. He just swiped it from yeah, the he did. He was a backup. He was a backup linebacker. They stole the ball twice last week on special teams, and they did it again here today. 
Just flat ripped it away from it. Big time play by the special team. They're proud of that punt coverage team. Yes, they are. Bobby yes, Hawks. Bobby Hawks. Special teams have done a great job. Straight ahead with Conniff. And they get something going with the ground game. A pickup of six by the big fullback. That's been a big challenge all week. Something they've been talking about, Washington has, about coming in, trying to stop the punt returns of Santana Moss. That's a way to stop it dead, huh? Oh, for sure. So now with field position and a second down and four, the Huskies in gear at the 29-yard line of the Hurricanes. High backfield behind Tuyasa Sopo. Elstrom in motion, and it's Arnold. And he got one or two. Morgan, the linebacker, in on the stop. And penalty markers fly in as they're still all tangled up at the end of the play. Chuck McFerrin's our referee. After the play, next call, personal foul on the defense. Personal foul against Miami. Automatic first down. Let's check the Dell game solutions, Bob. Well, Washington on offense wants to keep the offense on the field. Make first downs, run the ball, maybe some option. Defensively for Miami, contain Tui Asasopo. That means make the quarterback be a quarterback. Don't let him get out. Don't let him run. Slow him down. They've let him be a running back once that got him a first down on their opening drive. Since then, their special teams took over with a fumble recovery, and now they're working first down inside the Canes 14. Braxton Kleeman comes in now as a tailback. Elstrom, the lone wideout, there to the bottom of your screen. Yeah. On the option, Tui Asasopo inside the 10. Down to the 4. Going to be close to a first and goal. The option is the toughest running play in college football to stop right here. Huge gapping hole that Miami wanted to come in and stop the quarterback and force the pitch. That time they got the worst situation of all. Not only is uh, Tui Asasopo running it, he's got a huge hole. And on top of that, a bad situation in that they can still get a first down if this isn't. But it is. First and goal at the four. Rick Newhouse has got to be happy with what's happened so far. And, and he knew that the special teams had to give him a boost. They came out, opening drive, the offense stalled. The special teams got a fumble for him, and that's continued this drive inside the five-yard line. Arnold back in at tailback, two tight end set with Stevens and Ware. First and goal, Huskies trying to get on the scoreboard first. Tui Asasopo, the pitch to Arnold. And he's not going to break the tackle of Ed Reed, who came up from the secondary. Ed Reed is an outstanding defensive back, probably the smartest uh, player on that defensive team. Very quick and an outstanding player. Sure tackler. One of the Thorpe candidates as the top defensive back. Which Davis looking on, hoping that his team can come up with a couple more stops on second and what would be third down. Right now, it's second and goal just outside the five. They like the option inside here. They had the option run on that play, third and short, or inside the 10 yard line. They like the ball in, in Marcus' hands. Willie Hurst is in a slot. Tuiasa Sopa wanted to throw. Now he scrambles. To the end zone, he overshot everybody, got rid of it. Smart Willie play. Hurst was out there, the intended receiver. Smart play. Yep. Nice pressure by Chris Campbell again, the linebacker. Well, he had enough time to throw it. It's just that the receivers were covered, and he didn't make, make a big mistake by going ahead and throwing it into coverage. They change up personnel again now as Robbins and Arnold come back into the Husky huddle, and it's third and goal at the five. Don't be surprised to see an option here. Stevens, the tight end, flanks out now to the left side. He's a tall target if they decide to throw that way. Third and goal. That's the throw. Incomplete penalty marker down. Ed Reed that time trying to stay with a big tight end, Stevens. And we're going to have a penalty against the King. Hey. 
It's an automatic first down. Here's a look at it. Reed way inside of him. That's a, that's a good call. He did hit him before the ball got there, although the ball was way behind him. Exactly. And he would never have caught it. He did hit him before the ball got there. Not in a million years could he have made that catch. As it is, first down. And Miami has allowed only one touchdown pass in the last 31 quarters. That was with backups in the lineup. Arnold maybe got back to the line of scrimmage. I doubt it, though. Campbell and Dangerfield, the linebacking core. Offense the stop. Brad like to run at this Miami defense right at it because they're so quick right. running left and right. You like to run right at it, but if they can shut it down in the middle and they've got Damian Lewis, the, the outstanding defensive lineman right there in the center of that defensive line. Arnold has carried it five times and has minus one yards to show <laughs> for his work so far. <laughs> Kleeman comes in at the tailback now. Kind of behind Tuias and so far. I'd be shocked if we don't see some kind of option here, but there it is. And the pitch, Cleman, touchdown. Good call, partner. Three yard touchdown run by Braxton Cleman, the junior. And the woofing begins as Marcus Tuias and Sopo looks skyward. The Huskies lead 6 0. The Hurricanes, penalty-wise, were last in the Big East Conference in the number of penalties. They were the most penalized team in the conference. Penalties helped that drive right there. Anderson for the point after, and he's got it right up and in the middle. So the Huskies take advantage of the turnover. The special teams gets the offense in gear. Braxton Kleeman does the rest. Rick Neuheisel talking to his offense over there that's put points on the board following the special teams fumble recovery. And Tuya Sosopo and company go down. Braxton Kleeman, the three-yard touchdown, capped a 35-yard march in a little over three minutes to take the lead. John Anderson to kick high and short. Somebody better call fair catch on this one. They just made the catch and got tagged. At the 29 yard line, Robert Williams. I was on the field before the game, and Anderson was doing just that, just trying that high pooch kick off to the side si sideline. But you're right. They better call a fair catch yep. on that. That was awfully close. That's a live ball if nobody calls a fair catch. So now the Hurricanes take over for the first time offensively. The last time they touched it, Santana Moss dropped it on a punt return. Now they'll work from the 29 yard line. Ken Dorsey at quarterback, and already the fans are getting noisy. Here's the give. Jackson going nowhere. Lost yardage. Daryl Daniels made the tackle. Here's the Chile starting lineup up front for the Canes. Juan Gonzalez, an All-American candidate, with Bilbo Romberg, Wilkins, and McKinney. The wide receivers, blazing speed, especially Santana Moss. Reggie Wayne had two touchdowns last week. Mercer will start at tight end in the backfield. Nick Partland in front of Jackson, Ken Dorsey, as Bob said earlier, making just his fifth start, and this in hostile territory. Second down, 11. His first throw, almost picked off. Got it a little bit out in front of his intended receiver, Reggie Wayne, and that was a dangerous throw. Omari Lowe made the play on it on the corner. It's just not going to be as easy for this young man as it was last week. Little stop route, Amari Lowe. He gets stuck. Thought he was going a little bit deeper. When you go on the road, Brad, things aren't just the same. The uh, the, the grass isn't the same. The, the obviously the, the noise is not the same. At home, they're all behind you now. There is no checking off. You can't check off in this game. Huskies thinking about a blitz on third down at 12. Dorsey's got a roll of it. Wants a throwback screen the other way, incomplete. Jackson, the intended receiver, and it's three and out for the Hurricane. Well, you would expect the young sophomore, Dorsey, to be a little bit uh, on the nervous side. And I think he was. Yeah. But the key point is he didn't turn it over. He didn't make any mistakes. The Husky fans got this. This couldn't have started any better no. for Rick Neuheisen. His offense uh, sputtered, got a special teams turnover, took it in. 
defense stops him first try. Derek Johnson back waiting on Capshaw's punt. Ready Capshaw, nice kick. Fielded cleanly at the 30. And a penalty marker down on the return. Probably going to have an illegal block, which would negate an 11-yard run back. So let's wait and see if they take this a little bit deeper into Husky territory. Long jog downfield for our referee, Chuck McFerrin. Here's on the, the call. return, illegal block in the back. As you normally see on those plays, illegal block. And Ken Dorsey talking upstairs. His team trails by a touchdown. Brad Nessler, Bob Greasy, Lynn Swan, and our ABC crew at Husky Stadium, where the hometown team has Miami, at least early, right where they want them. They're up a touchdown with 7-13 remaining in the first quarter. And Marcus Tuyasasopo brings his troops out. They huddle on the sideline and come right to the line of scrimmage. First down, Washington from its own 22. The option to pitch to Arnold. A little dance out there. Ran into Dan Morgan, as a lot of people will do this year. Morgan may be on his way to becoming the top career tackler all time in Miami history. It was interesting talking with Rick Neuheisel and uh, Keith Gilbertson, the offensive coordinator yesterday. You know, these guys, when the coaches came in last year, they didn't know anything about an option. I mean, they, they weren't right. option guys. They were passing guys, uh, West Coast offense type of guys. Rick was at UCLA. And they said, you know, the guys that knew the option were the uh, two Yasa and Kata, and Kata <laughs> the two guys that did, did it in high school. That's so right. they kind of taught the coaches. Play action, trouble on a blitz from the corner. Tuyasa Sopo got away momentarily, but he didn't get away from that whole wave. Damian Lewis. It was Leonard Myers who was the guy that forced Tuyasa Sopo back That's into in the pocket. Face. That's a corner. He came on that corner blitz. That was a corner blitz. And one of the things you have to do. And this is one of the things that this that, that Marcus needs to learn is when you're on the short side of the field and the corner is up and bumped. You got to check him once you get the snap because it's a short distance for him to get to the quarterback from there. And he forced a third and 12. All three wideouts trot to the left side for the Huskies. Now this corner right here has a short angle to the quarterback. Doesn't count. Going to go with a draw to Hurst. Willie got back across the original line of scrimmage, picked up about four, but it's going to be fourth down and close to eight. So time to punt for the second time. First time Santana Moss had it stripped away from him. And you know he's uh, wanting to do something. Ooh. You mentioned he had returned punts for touchdowns in three of his last four games. In, in the other game, he returned a kickoff for a touchdown that was called back. He's got an itch back there. He's looking to scratch. Ryan Fleming will punt. Good look here. Let's see if he kicks it to him or kicks away. Or if he got it away at all, he doesn't. It's blocked. The Hurricanes are going to have it at about the 28-yard line. Well, Washington should have gotten a punt blocked last week and did. Got away with it. Miami came right up the middle and got one this week. Fleming just took too long. James Lewis came flying in there. And now the Canes with a special team play of their own. That one just took too long, Bob. Right up the middle. Two big turnovers, one for each team. At the 28 now, Miami, first down. And here's an opening. They get the ground game going for James Jackson. And he picked up about seven in a hurry. Let's check in with Swanee. Well, what? One of the things that Miami wanted to do is take the crowd out of this game in a hurry, which they didn't. And not only is this section called the dog patch for the Huskies, very noisy, but they're intelligent about it. Every time the quarterback looks like he's going audible, they increase the level of noise so he can't hear. We can hear it come up behind you, Lynn. Second down and three. Three wide receivers set for Dorsey from the shotgun. Going to go outside, complete. Andre King, and it looks like it's going to be a first down. Now let's go back to the punt block. I mentioned last week 
Washington almost got a putt blocked up the middle. Take a look right here inside again this week, right next to the center. Everybody turns out and nobody was blocking uh, the guy that ended up blocking the field, the uh, putt. First and 10, Miami. Jackson trips on his own and goes down near the 15 yard line. Defensively for Washington, here's your Chili's front wall. Farms is the guy they want to get pressure on the quarterback. Roberson and Triplett, the push inside, and Julian, the other defensive end. Daniels, their leading tackler last year with Kelly and Williams on the outside. And the secondary low, Akbar, Williams, and Anthony Von Tour, who's starting for the first time this season. Probably their best corner, a big guy who had six interceptions last year. Second and nine. Here's a stretch. Nice job defensively. Larry Triplett, their defensive captain, gets out there to stop Jackson. Three minutes, 28 seconds remaining in the first quarter. If you just joined us from Husky Stadium in Seattle, it is seven to nothing as the Washington special team stripped the ball of Santana Moss and then took it in from 35 yards. A three yard touchdown run by Braxton Cleman, but Miami has come back, blocked a punt of their own. And now they've got a third and eight at the Husky 15, looking to tie things up. Dorsey, quick throw to the 10 to the big tight end, Mercer. Man, was he met head on. Curtis Williams, helmet to helmet with a big fella, and brought him down short Curtis, of the first down. Kurt, Curtis Williams, outstanding safety in that secondary. From behind the defense, from the goal post, little option route by the tight end. Got the ball there quickly, just didn't pick up the first down. So Miami comes in, Todd Seavers. They're going to try a field goal of 27 yards from the near hash. And got it up and good. So Miami does get points out of their special team play, but it's only three. And still, it's the Huskies leading the number four team in the country by four. So both teams have taken miscues on the opposition's punt team and turned them into points. But Washington leads 7-3. Derek Johnson now back waiting at the five-yard line. Boy, optimist, optimism abounds here in uh, in Seattle with this program since New Heisel has come uh, in just a year and a half. An outstanding recruiting program last year and another one in the works for uh, this season. Rick told us he's got a tremendous amount of big time recruits at this game today. <laughs> you know he'd love for a number of reasons to win it. That would be one of them. Derek Johnson from the four. Straight up the middle, Johnson's got an opening, got by the kicker, got out to the 40-yard line, and Daryl Jones saved the touchdown. Well, Jones is a speedy wide receiver. In fact, he's on the all-Big East track uh, team for Miami. He's on there just for that reason, as a safety in case somebody breaks through. That's two big plays in back-to-back -back weeks by number 21. Last year, this uh, Husky team was last, dead last, and special teams in kickoff and punt returns. They've improved a great deal this year already. Derek Johnson had an end around for a touchdown against Idaho. Big kickoff return there. Takes it out to the 42-yard line. So excellent field position to start things for Tui Asisopo and the Huskies. Here comes a blitz. Marcus over the middle to his tight end. And that's going to be a first down to Jeremy Stevens. Edward Reed made the stop. College football on ABC Sports brought to you by Chevrolet. If only everything was as dependable as a Chevy. Chevy will be there. Chili's. I want my Chili's baby back ribs. Only a Chili's. Courtyard by Marriott. The hotel designed by business travelers. And Dell providing the infrastructure to power your e-business. Beautiful fountain outside the University of Washington campus where now the Huskies have moved back into Kane territory first down at the 48 yard line. Nice cadence almost drew Miami offside and now it's caught up the fullback and he rumbles his way down to the 41 yard line. Conniff is a big bull of a fullback doesn't get to carry the ball a whole lot. But as you mentioned he went to high school with the Tui Asisopo, so they know they know each other, and they, and they know the option very well. 
They've been playing together since eighth grade. We said to Marcus the other day, it must be nice to have a teammate that long. He said, yeah, and we still live together. Yeah. Some yeah. nights, he said, we sit there and watch TV, don't say one word to each other. I said, hey, it's just like being married. <laughs> <laughs> Second down and three. Inside handoff, Hurst. Back to the line of scrimmage. That's about it. Somebody lost their hat. A minute and ten remaining in the first quarter. 7-3 Washington. Don't forget next Saturday on ABC. More great college football regional action. Some of you'll see Anthony Thomas and number three Michigan take on Deshaun Foster and 17th ranked UCLA. Other regional action will be in Tallahassee for Florida State and the Tar Heels, Washington, Colorado, and others. Check your local listings for details. Get all the games on pay-per-view by calling your local cable or satellite company. A lot of great interconference matchups with the Big e, uh, Big A, uh, the uh, Pac-10, and all the different conferences this year. Tried a little flare pass out to Conniff as fullback, and it's incomplete on a third and three. Big 12 Colorado playing uh, uh, Washington next week. Rick uh, Neuheisel going back going to Boulder. Back home. He <laughs> said that's going to be a very emotional uh, trip, but uh, looking forward to it. Santana Moss not the man dropping back in punt return formation here as they expect that Fleming will try to knock this thing out of bounds. It's the strong safety read it's just the defensive they just defense just says a safe punt return and he goes back to catch it. Fleming at his last one blocks this time lobs it to the near side does not take a very fortuitous bounce goes sideways out of bounds at about the 19 yard line so not a great gain in the punting game there. Time now for our courtyard by Marriott moment today. Takes us back 1994. As I mentioned in the open, the only other time these two schools have met. A historic meeting it was after trailing 14-3 at halftime. Huskies scored a couple of quick touchdowns in the third quarter. An interception off Acosta there. Russell Hairston took it back, and it gave Jim Lambright maybe his biggest win ever. 38-20, the whammy in Miami. Damon Heward was the quarterback on that uh, Miami team. On the Husky team. Now he's yeah. the quarterback. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's team. right. He, now he's in Miami with uh, the Dolphins. There you go. Here's the throw and a nice one by Dorsey. And he zips that baby out there to the 32 yard line complete for a first down to pick up a 13 to Reggie Wayne impressed with Dorsey uh, Brad the way he moves around when he needs to yep. I mean he's a big guy six five just uh, like we said this is only his fifth start in his first start on the road away from the Orange Bowl just just has a nice feel very intelligent um, Larry Coker the offensive coordinator telling me he is a very very good kid to coach and a first down at the 32. Changing things up at the line of scrimmage. Here comes the crowd. The noise comes up. Three wideouts. Almost tripping on the handoff. Jackson cuts it up inside. And picked up about two. And we've got a penalty marker down at the end of the play. So that'll stop things here. They're saying holding. Ken Dorsey at least saying holding against Washington. And our referees, Mike, we're having trouble with that so far today. Personal foul on the defense. Mistakes, you can't make too many against a good football team. Both these coaches would tell you that. And both teams have had a couple that have cost them points so far. Yeah. I mentioned Miami being the most penalized team in their conference. So Washington it does pretty good. And uh, they, don't, they don't get penalized too much. They're about the middle of the pack in the Pac-10. So that moves it all the way out to the 49 yard line. Moss and King will trot out there to the left side. Again, Dorsey has to bark his signals. Going to throw to Santana Moss in and out of his hands. They try to get a little one man wide receiver screen out there. And it's incomplete to end the first quarter. So a couple of mistakes. In the punting game so far has been everything that seemed so easy last week in that big win seems so difficult here for the Hurricanes today. At the end of one, Huskies lead 7 3. Back to start the second quarter at Husky Stadium 7 3. Washington leads Miami. First quarter played really right into the hands of the fans and what Rick Neuheisel was telling us in the last couple of days what they wanted to do control the ball a little bit control the clock 
and keep Miami at bay. So far they have, but you know at some point that lightning, or in this case, a hurricane, will hit. Second and ten. Moss in motion toward the ball and whistle. A penalty marker. Delay a game after the end of a quarter. That's almost inexcusable. Just had three minutes to get ready. Well, <laughs> first quarter. The coach's fault. Here's how it went in the first quarter. The game summary. Santana Moss on a punt return. And you see had it stripped away from him. And 35 yards later, it was Braxton Kleeman on the pitch from Marcus Tuiasisopo. Washington went up 7 to nothing. And then the Huskies made a mistake of their own with their punt team, having one blocked. And the Hurricanes turned that into a field goal. Second down, 15. Dorsey from the shotgun. Going to go deep. Got a man out there. Almost intercepted. Hakeem Akbar had his hands on it. Knows he should have had it. Underthrown intended for Reggie Wayne. Ball was underthrown. It needed to be thrown down the field. It was a skinny post. Akbar was sitting in the middle of the field. Take a look from behind the defense. Number nine is Akbar. He's looking at the quarterback the whole way. That ball was underthrown because he didn't got hit when he was throwing it. Yep. Skinny post. That one was downright emaciated. And he was underthrown. Third and 15. This is where it gets a little hard to hear for the quarterback. In trouble is Dorsey. In a lot of trouble. Down he goes. And it's Big Larry Triplett. Got the early pressure and then Triplett finished him off. From behind the quarterback, this defense was last, dead last last year in sacks of the quarterback. They only had 13 all of last year. Getting after it today. Gap shot, a punt. High, beautiful kick. Derek Johnson's got a call for a fair catch and makes it at about the 36 yard line. So the Huskies have it back. They have the lead 7 to 3. And to Times Square Stadium we go, John and Terry. Brad, thanks a lot. Terry will join me at halftime. But first, here on the Burger King update, a wild one between NC State and Indiana State was down by 12 with five minutes left. They forged the lead. And then Andy Payne's 37 yard field goal is blocked by Terrence Holt, Tory's brother, and NC State in their second straight thriller come off with a win 41 38. Coach Yamato off to a big Didn't start he? there, huh? Great start. Huskies now working from the 36-yard line. Two tight ends set. Tui Asisopo on the option will keep. And Marcus Scott two, and that's about it. Ed Reed again from the secondary came up to help on the hit. And last week, Tui Asisopo kept the ball most of the time on the option. We talked to Rick Neuheisel about whether or not that was a problem. You worry anytime you've got a player of his caliber who means as much as he does to our team taking that many hits. But I think also you, you're you probably more at risk standing in the pocket when you don't see the hits coming uh, than you are when you've got the ball under, tucked in your arm and you've been a running back and uh, had the ability to run with the ball as he's had his whole life. Mark has got 80 yards on 15 carries last week in the opener. Here he is back to throw in the pocket going deep. Elstrom's there just over. The diving wide receiver's fingertips. Leonard Myers in coverage. That one would have been a touchdown if Marcus would have pulled the string a little bit more. And the Hurricanes wanted to keep Marcus in the pocket. You couldn't do it much better than this. Sits in the pocket, sits in the pocket, waits. Had plenty of time to eject, and he didn't. He just threw it a little bit too far. Elstrom, they're missing their number one receiver from last year, Chris Jurgens. He was a leading receiver here at a knee. And then Jawan uh, Hooker, who was a wide, re uh, wide receiver, Olympic guy. He's in Australia. He's running on the Olympic team. Third down at seven. Low snap on the shotgun. Tuya Sissopo goes out complete this time. Going to be a first down. Out to Justin Robbins. 
So there's one of the young receivers. Yeah, a true, true freshman. freshman. Third catch of the day for Robbins, and that's why Tui Asasopo's patting him on the back. They need some speed. Swanley, we were talking about this. Joe Warren Hooker, as uh, Bob said, since Sydney, and there's another part of that story. Not Lynn apparently didn't hear us. Interesting part of that story about Hooker being in the Olympics and something that goes along with it we'll tell you about later. At the 48 nice play fake. Marcus with time Look with out. touch oh, almost snuck that thing in there to Stevens the tight end that was in triple coverage. Swanee talking about Jawar and Hooker interesting sidebar to that story. Well that's correct uh, the Olympic track coach. Uh, is the former track coach at Washington State. <laughs> and uh, although Hooker placed seventh uh, in, in the 400-meter race, he was selected to be on the relay team. Now, I'm not trying to say anything about the coach's credibility. Yeah. But, I mean, there's an apple cup at stake. <laughs> and he just effectively took out one of the fastest wide receivers for the University of Washington for the season. And, you know, one of the guys that helped Hooker actually get on that team, too, former Olympic gold medalist Lee Evans, who's one of the assistant track coaches here at Washington. Tui Asasopo again trying to throw into some traffic intended for hooks and that's incomplete. Yeah Leonard Myers number 22 undercut uh, Tui Asasopo and if he didn't throw it high it was going to be picked off. So Marcus been a little long a little high with some of those tosses and it brings up a third down and ten he's only four of ten throwing the football so far today. This is his fourth year he is not he did not redshirt so uh, Marcus has been here under two coaches, but he's had four different offensive, offensive coordinators, yeah. so it's always tough with the coach that you're working with when you've got to change them. They're going to have to hurry here from the gun on third and ten. Plenty of time. Now straight up the middle, he's thinking about going, and he's not going to get away See, from Dan Morgan. Now that's the difference. This Miami team has the speed to catch up with Marcus Tuiasso. Morgan says he's lowered his 40 time in the past year and gained some muscle and some weight to boot. Here's another look. Look stays in the pocket. Plenty of time. Huge gaping hole. And then Morgan who moved from to the middle linebacker from outside this year with the loss of Nate Webster brings him down. Fleming had one blocked and only went 22 yards off the side of his foot with the other one. Moss waits back near the 10. Going to try to angle it away from Moss, but he didn't get it away from him. Right Here he it. goes from the nine. Made one miss. Up the sideline, Santana Moss. Boy, he can get there in a hurry. Out to the 33-yard line. A 40-yard kick, a 24-yard return. So the Hurricanes down four, but have good field position, and they've got number six on their side when we come back. I don't know if there's a prettier picture in college football than looking out at Lake Washington from the press box and some of the folks who bring their boats in there. Right now their team's in front seven to three. Dorsey draw play. I.J. Davenport and he goes out for about nine. Dell Game Solutions for Miami. Darcy has to stay cool on the road. Lots of noise. A lot of distractions. It's going to be tough but he's got to be the guy. Defensively. Eliminate the big plays. Miami likes to get the ball to their wide receivers. Their backs are quick. They throw the ball downfield. Just eliminate the big play and make them go the distance with a lot of plays. Straight up the middle. Going to get a first down the old-fashioned way. McPartland, the fullback. Jeremiah Farms brings him down, but they'll move the sticks out to about the 45-yard line. We talked about Ken Dorsey making only his fifth start and on the road, and his head coach talked about his quarterback. Obviously he's got a huge upside the next couple of years he's going to be an outstanding quarterback and he's played well he's been very efficient been very mature and uh, from a coaching standpoint he's done what you like for a young quarterback to do and that's protect the football on a pitch here oh. Davenport good look and play inside the 45 and down to the 37 yard line that had a nifty look to it didn't it yeah Miami had, had a little uh, option their own on that one. Davenport who missed basically all of last year missed 12 games after having an ACL injury in the season opener. 
Ajay that time on the pitch from Dorsey takes it all the way down in Husky territory to the 37 yard line. Miami has a lot of good running backs. Number four the big fella is one of them, 235 pounder. Dorsey on the roll throws on the run that was into traffic not a good pass and Jeremiah Farms let Dorsey know he was there at the just, end of that one just a two man route to the wide side of the field the quarterback rolls that way the receivers tried to slide to an open area and there was none the defense did a nice job of coverage gonna go to roll to the left it's a two man route and he just uh, he just throws that ball up for grabs Akbar was the closest one to it number nine Dorsey's numbers not very impressive so far. Three of eight, 22 yards. Last week he had three touchdown passes. Today three completions so far. Now he's got four. Woo! There's a hit on McPartland, the fullback. Omari Lowe, helmet to helmet. You could hear the crack way up here. That's going to bring up third down and long. Third and eight coming up. Under ten and a half minutes in the half. Washington leading. On a three yard touchdown run, seven to three. Marcus Tuiasasopo waiting his turn. Right now, it's the defense's chance for the dogs. As the Hurricanes force into a third and eight under a blitz, in and out of the hands of Andre King. Would have been a first down. Should have had it on the road. Little boy just a little bit off. Just a little bit off. Won't have the timing that they had last week. Little slant round from the left side. It was wide open, had some room to run. So Miami's going to have to punt. Capshaw will come out and try to drop one down close. I don't know about this. I, you know, this this could be a fake punt. It's almost a four down area here. They're going to kick it. Kick and it they kicked it in the end zone. They're not going to get much out of this deal. So they gain about uh, they gain about 12, 15 yards. Yep. I think that's an area. I think that's an area, Brad, where you go ahead and go for it on fourth down. The defense is good. Go for it on fourth down. Maybe you pick it up. Want to start a family? Right now? I just got supplemental insurance. What's that? Half flat. Well, if we get sick, our health insurance won't cover things like lost pay <clears throat> or other expenses. <laughs> This does. What's it called? Affleck! I don't know. Affleck! Affleck, without it, no insurance is complete. Hey, what's a sirloin stack? Well, it's skim to bam to boom diddly bomb boom. Skim to bam to boom diddly bomb boom? Skim to bam to boom diddly bomb boom. Yeah, and it's got hody hody hody. Hody hody hody. Chili sirloin stack. It's a mouthful. What would happen if an SUV were raised by a family of sports cars? Zoom, zoom. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Yeah, zoom, 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 zoom. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Introducing the 200 horsepower Mazda Tribute. The SUV with the soul of a sports car. sure I've ever done a game where two coaches had identical records. These two guys <laughs> each in their sixth year and identical records coming in of 41 and 19 at Husky Stadium in Seattle. Full house. Nice day so far. No rain. Some clouds you see in the background and the Huskies lead it seven to three. Brad Nessler Bob Greasy and Lynn Swan with you from Seattle. Here's a counter. Arnold. Runs into Chris Campbell, among others, for that hurricane defense. So far, not a lot on the ground for Washington by any of their backs, but what matters most is they got the three yards down close when they needed it. Arnold's got seven carries, but only four yards. Well, what, what Miami can do with that, with that good secondary of theirs is allow the corners to cover the wide receivers man to man keep a free safety in the middle of the field and then just put eight guys up to stop the run. 
and say, go ahead and try to throw on us. We think we're better than your corners and your slot, your slot men. Marcus is going to throw on this one unless he keeps it himself. Looking left. Now down the middle. Got his man, Elstrom. Across the 45 to the 46-yard line. First down and probably the best throw of the day for Tuiasa Sopo. But what he did is he pumped. He came out and pumped, and the, the defensive backs jumped on everything short, and the receivers kept going up the field. Good play right there. They just ran right by him because Reed and Rumpf and all the other guys, the defensive backs, had jumped on the short routes. Alstrom's catches a first down at the 47. Back to the ground. Conniff bangs his way to midfield. Picked up about three. And was the ball loose at the end of the play? And mix it up a little bit. I guess not. Well, Brad, Bob, exactly what you were talking about, about Tui Asasopo looking off the receiver, is exactly what you gain by looking at the film and studying. I'm sure the Miami defense watched Tui Asasopo, and he wasn't looking receivers off. We watched it when we watched the game film. But this time, he does look them off. They say, okay, he normally doesn't. We'll jump on this, and it creates the opening downfield. He continues to learn his position each game, Bob. He sure does. Here comes a blitz from the corner. And a late pitch. That ball is loose. And back to the line of scrimmage goes Willie Hurst. That was a live ball. Morgan got over there to make sure he wasn't going anywhere with it. Sometimes great players just try to do too much. And uh, other, you know, times you should just hold on to the football, not pitch it out there. Tuyasa Sopo just trying to make something out of nothing. Our Aflac trivia question today, what Miami quarterback went on to coach at the University of Washington? Think that one over. We'll have the answer for you in a few minutes. Third down. And six. Huskies trying to keep the drive alive. Over the middle they go. I don't know if Farms got there or not. Might be fourth down in about uh, eight inches. Let's wait and see. Jeremy Stevens, the big tight end. He is some kind of target. And his forward progress, boy, it's awfully close. They might have to take a look at this one. Rick Neuheisel said, you know, I'm one of the biggest proponents in the conference of going on fourth down yeah, if I, I think it's going to help the I, cause. I think he goes for it on fourth down more than any. And, and the, the, the situation we just had with Miami down on the uh, Washington 33-yard line, uh -huh. and Butch punted the ball, you know, that would have been a no-brainer for him. Well, we're about two miles in the air, and I guessed he was short by a little bit. We'll wait and see. <laughs> this new field turf, you never know if they have the markings on it perfectly. And they keep pulling it. Yeah, they keep pulling it, and it's about that much short. I was only about an inch off. That's not bad from uh, That's four pretty stories good, up. Partner. <laughs> we, are, we are straight up. I, I went to you. bed early last yeah. night. <laughs> <laughs> I like the field turf. I really do. And they must have marked it pretty well. Yes, they did. Yeah. Perfectly straight lines that Paul Allen of the Seahawks bought for this field, which the Huskies share for the next two seasons with the Seahawks, who will play the world champion Rams here tomorrow. Well, here you go. Fourth and inches. Tuyas Sopo, quarterback sneak, or will it be caught off the fullback? I wouldn't try to hand it to anybody. I bet you run an option this way and give him a chance to make a big play. Chad Ward, his best lineman, is right guard, fourth and inches. He's going to follow those big butts. And did he get there? I think he did. Uh, no question. Not only did the Huskies get a new field out of it, but they got new lights for their stadium and also a big new scoreboard. Yep. And now the Husky fans rocking the place. Been playing ball here 81 years. And they won a lot of games, about 81%. There aren't many college stadiums that have a roof covering the side supports. Yep. And it's, and they're up here where it rains a lot, they need it. We're going to be dry no matter what happens today. The sun's out right now. That's a possible double pass. It was a lateral, and they wanted to go to Elstrom. Yes, they, they ran did. this in practice on Thursday. Willie Hurst wanted to throw a double pass, and they had Elstrom streaking down the sideline. Yes, they did. You caught it right, and he just didn't have... I don't know why he didn't throw it. I guess he didn't have time to throw it. Looking at his nails there. <laughs> <laughs> Miami closed on it pretty fast. Take a look from behind. Can't tell what there was a bad backward pass straight up the field, the top of your screen. 
I like the call, though. I like the call by Keith Gilbertson because right after you go for it on fourth down and make it, you come right back and you try to get him with a big play. Eighth play of the drive right here. There was a loss of five on that one. Second down and 15. Back to the 48-yard line. Two uh, Sissoko straight drop. Marcus now on the move. Going to loft one for Elstrom. Did he catch it? He did. What a grab by Elstrom. A pickup of 36. Tuiasa Sopo just keeps this alive. From behind the defense. Nobody's open. Now he's going to scramble to our left. The coverage is pretty good. He's just going to give him a chance. Lays it out in front of him. Ruff was there with the coverage, and Elstrom makes a nice diving catch. This is not easy catch. Put just enough air under it, and Elstrom hits the turf just inside the 13-yard line. Huskies threatening again, leading 7-3. On the option, Tuyasa Sopo broke a tackle inside the five. Touchdown! Marcus Tuyasa Sopo, 13-yard tackle-breaking run. That shows his stoutness, Bob. He's a tough guy. The, the defensive coaches for Miami were talking about his balance. A good a balance he had. Didn't get knocked off his feet very easily. John Anderson for the point after. Up and good. As Keith Jackson dubbed him last year, the Warrior. He weaves his way to the end zone. 14-3, Husky. On that last drive by Marcus Tuyas, Sopo and company, 66 yards on three for three, part of the numbers he's put up so far. An 80 yard march in nine plays, 14 to three, number 15, Washington, leading number four, Miami. We were talking about the two quarterbacks at the top of the telecast, and so far it's the senior, yep. the home, who's playing at home doing much better than the true sophomore who is on the road for the first time as a starter. Anderson's kick. Taken at the 12 by Johnson. Broke a tackle, cuts outside. Oh, just got tripped up or he might have been off to the races. Which Davis knew there were concerns to worry about with Marcus Tuyasasopo. Talked with us about who he plays like. Our coaching staff and our players uh, look at them and, and think a lot of them very similar to Michael Vick and Donovan McNabb. Uh, uh, very athletic, uh, do an outstanding job running the option, got a live arm. I mean, that's the one thing. Sometimes guys that are very physical and can run and run the option, maybe they have a little bit of a drawback, but he doesn't in the, in the ability to throw the football. Now looking for his own quarterback to throw the football, and he does go in deep, almost picked off. Omari Lowe played it beautifully in front of Reggie Wayne. The ball was thrown to the outside, and Wayne was running more to the inside. The uh, passing game for the Hurricanes just not quite right, not right there. The timing is just a shat, tad off. There you see the ball was thrown to the wrong shoulder, and Dorsey Lowe almost had an interception. Four of 11, 24 yards. Draw play inside Davenport. Najee got out to about the 38-yard line. Coming up tonight in prime time, part of our doubleheader, Florida State and Georgia Tech, a key battle from Bobby Dodd Stadium in Atlanta. Many of you will see that. Colorado and USC are the Trojans for real after their opening win over Penn State. We find out tonight right here on ABC Sports. Third down. This is the shortest third down that Miami has had in the entire ball game. And it's a long five to go. Single coverage up the top. 
Norris is going to call a timeout. So he wanted to check off, and he couldn't because of the noise. Last week in the game against McNeese State, Butch Davis said he checked off 60, 70 percent of the time. Not here, not today. Not with the Husky fans that's, making as much noise as they are. It's a lesson you have to learn on the road. A young kid, you're on the road. You can't check off. you got to have these plays that are good for anything. We were talking last night. You made an interesting observation about how your game plan gets scoped down a little bit on the road. Well, it's because you can't check off. And when you go to the line of scrimmage, the plays you call have to be good for any defense you might see. So that's, that's that shrinks your game plan. You can't have as many plays because you've got to call something that's going to be good for anything they might do because you can't check off college football on ABC Sports brought to you by Ford F Series the best selling trucks are built Ford tough Aflac without it no insurance is complete Nicorette gum you can do it Nicorette can help and FedEx FedEx be absolutely sure you can be sure of one thing as we go through some of the haze and fog to Mount Rainier it isn't a mile high so far for the fans here in the stadium but they're kind of loving what they're seeing 14 to 3 Huskies. It's a big play right here. Sure is. Third and five. Three wide outs for Dorsey. Huskies are thinking about a corner blitz. They back out of it. Dorsey across the middle. Santana Moss and he looked like he's limping. He hurt that ankle. Last week, it's taped. heavily taped, and yeah. he kind of broke stride, didn't yeah. he? That's the first catch for Moss today. I think he really hurt that on that punt return when he fumbled. Last week, he was spectacular, as he always is, against McNeese State. Fielded the first punt of the ball game, and off to the races, he went right down the sideline in a hurry. And then on an end around, also in the first half, and he takes another one long distance. He's gone. As he had a 94 yards with a return, 75 yards on that end around. Dorsey back to throw. Fire is complete. It's a first down for Miami this time. Down to the 43 yard line. They got that pass to Daryl Jones, another guy who's got speed to burn. Yes, he does. So that quiets the crowd momentarily Jones with just over in. four to go in the half. Daryl Jones was in for Moss, who's on the sideline there. But they, like you say, they both have speed. In fact, they were both on the, the track team. But yep. they got a lot of speed. They lose three of these four guys, but they've got two young ones ready to replace them. Najee Davenport hit in the backfield. Lost almost three. Triplet and Julian. Came in there to help on the stop. Moss comes back in, but he's favoring that ankle. Looked to us even at the walkthrough yesterday that he looked like he was a limp. And you see he kind of broke stride right there. Almost like he hit a divot. And even with a bad wheel, Santana Moss is uh, faster than most guys. Third down at 13. Uh, second down at 13. Here comes a blitz. Got him. Ball's loose. Huskies have it. Anthony Von Tour on a corner blitz. And they're barking in the stadium again. Well, that was the short side. Butch is saying his ball, his arm was coming forward. It was a pass. But the short side again. Here's the short side corner. You're on the hash mark right here. Whenever he's up there and bump, you got to watch for it. See, the safety came over to pick up the receiver. And the Huskies now with another opportunity before halftime. Four wide outs for Tuiasa Sopo from the 49. Looks right, comes back to the middle. Got him. Inside the 25 to the 24 is Cleman out of the backfield. Here comes Washington in a hurry. He's doing a great job of looking one way and coming back the other way. This is something we didn't see him do in the game last week. Rick Neuheisel told us yesterday he's so talented and he's been such a great combination player being able to run that his biggest problem was reading coverages. Today seems like he's got a pretty good feel for where the Canes are. First down at the 24. 15th ranked team in the country. Right now, rocking number four, Miami. 
Here's Cleveland on the ground. And Dan Morgan. That'll stop your momentum a little bit. Morgan is all linebacker. He led this team in tackles last year. Like you mentioned he was a four year starter. He came in here when the program was down. After the sanctions, uh, Butch Davis was here a couple of years. The sanctions were in. He came in as a freshman, and Butch needed him to play. I mean, he was playing with freshmen and sophomores there in 97, the only year that uh, Butch didn't win more than he lost. Two tight ends. No gain on that last play at second and ten. One of those tight ends, Stevens, in motion. Dewey Asasopo loads. Open. Fires. Right open. Stevens, touchdown. The biggest target on the field for Tuiasa Sopo. They played it beautifully. And the Huskies lead 20 to 3. It's a well designed play by the offense. Keith Gilbertson, a tight end coming in motion, swings out. Tuiasa Sopo, they're hot right now. Are they ever? They hot. John Anderson in for the point after. Got it. Penalty markers down on the extra point. Twenty one to three. And this penalty is going against Miami. And it's an offside call. Decline. Decline. 21 3, the last seven from Tuiasa Sopo to his 6 7 tight end, Bob. Well, he just went across the, the, the formation in motion, and he has two receivers coming inside, and the tight end just swung to the outside, and there was not a hurricane out there. Good throw, good execution, well designed play. So Marcus Tuiasa Sopo is run for one, thrown for one. And the undisputed leader of this Husky team has his team up 21 to 3. Rick Newhouse has got to be going. I didn't think it was going to be quite this good with two minutes left in the first half. There's the numbers. He may not be a dark horse Heisman candidate when this day is done. Well, he is showing. He's proven in the past that he can run. He's showing today he can sit in the pocket and read coverage and look off safeties and complete passes. There's the inexperienced sophomore Ken Dorsey making only his fifth start and finding a very, very tough place to try to win yeah. his fifth and, game. And it's gotten worse because now you're on the road and you're behind. And you're behind by 18 points. Andre Johnson the sideline nice return again second good return and out to the 40 yard line a 37 yard kickoff return earlier we asked you our Aflac trivia question what Miami quarterback went on to coach at the University of Washington none other than the most famous Washington coach Don James quarterback in the 50s for the Canes and longtime coach here a national championship in 91 and he would be here today but he's on a Safari in Africa with Mike Lou, the old <laughs> athletic director, a good buddy of his uh, down in Tucson. They play golf. They had this lined up for a long time. I'd say they're probably having some fun about yes, now. Yes, sir. Penalty markers before the snap again. With 1:52 remaining in the half. Dead ball. And the dead ball. Ball start. Ball start. On the offense. Five yards still for coming down. up. Now the Valvoline Halftime 2000. John Saunders and Terry Bowden will have scores, highlights, and all the action in college football today from Times Square Stadium. John and Terry a minute and 52 away. Some interesting scores, some interesting ongoing games, and this one definitely interesting for all of those across the country. That ball almost picked off by Crambrink, who had one of the first big plays of the ball game. The backup linebacker pass intended for Shockey, the tight end. The, the reason Kenny Dorsey is playing is that Kenny Kelly uh, it, it went left the University of Miami and decided to go and play baseball. They would have had two quarterbacks Kenny Kelly and Dorsey back but with Kelly leaving they really don't have any other experienced quarterbacks behind Dorsey. 
Dorsey in his starts had had a great ratio of 12 touchdown passes, only one interception, but he's struggling today. Nice opening that time. Clinton Portis. Some people say the number three tailback on the depth chart might be the best running back they have. I, I, I've been impressed with Clinton Portis. He last, uh, he's had six 100-yard games. Last year as a true freshman, he ran for over 800 yards. And those 500-yard games last year set a school record. Dorsey picks up the loose ball and has to eat it. And Larry Triplett made sure he gobbled it down. Larry's having a good game. This is where this is where Butch Davis and the Hurricanes miss the experience of Kenny Kelly. I mean, you may still want to play Ken Dorsey, but you need to take Dorsey out of the game, sit him on the sideline, let him calm down a little bit, but they don't have anybody else to put in. Timeout Miami with 116 remaining. Ken Dorsey, the tall sophomore, 6'5", sophomore out of California. Coming up on Monday, we got a fierce rivalry for you. And when we mean fierce, we mean fierce. The New England Patriots and the New York Jets, they really can't stand each other, to be honest with you. Al Michaels, Stan Fox, Dennis Miller, Eric Dickerson, and Melissa Starks will be there Monday Night Football. When you talk about two teams that trade draft choices for coaching swaps I mean <laughs> that ought to be interesting I like your line they really don't like each other you talk about rivalries <laughs> well, Bill Belichick of course now with the Patriots Al Groves a head coach of the Jets Bill Parcells still in their didn't, front office didn't Parcells just come out with a book and he didn't speak too highly not about, a bill uh, did he no. oh. so Miami on fourth down Set to punt. The Huskies have to run their punt return team out there in a hurry. Here's the kick. Oh, almost hit one of the Husky players downfield, but did not, and rolls inside the 10 to about the 8 yard line. 51 yard kick with that roll. And 105, all that's remaining here in the half. Marcus Tuiasisopo has been everything that we advertise to you. Last year became the first player in college football history to have a game where he threw for 300 yards and ran for 200 yards. That against Stanford, yeah. remarkable performance. And on the other side of the field, it's a tough day for the young Dorsey. Tuiasa Sopo is 9 of 15, 141 yards passing and a touchdown, and he's rushed for another 35 yards and a touchdown. They played close to the vest, I would guess, here from their own eight-yard line. Going to give it to Conniff, the fullback. Got a couple, maybe three. Dan Morgan, the linebacker in on another hit. And the clock works its way under a minute. Well, the Pac-10 has really uh, reared up and uh, and shut some people up about talking about last year how bad the Pac-10 was. So. That UCLA game over Alabama was the big one part of a 7-0 weekend yeah. to open up things. Yeah, and it continues. Second down at seven. Half minute left in the first half. And Marcus is going to take a knee. Smart football now by the Huskies. They're not going to get cued at all. Their fans are going to give them a huge ovation as they head to the locker room, as well they should. Because right now they are shocking the fourth ranked team in the country. And Butch Davis is going to have to regroup his Hurricanes or they're going to have a long 3,000 mile flight home with some long faces. Let's go to Lynn Swan. Rick, we knew this was going to be kind of a gut it out kind of a ball, play, a ball game and game plan for you. Worked on the first touchdown, but you opened it up. Well, <laughs> can't tell everybody everything, <laughs> but uh, we've got a lot of more football to play. This is a very talented Miami team. They're going to have a spirited conversation in there right now. They're going to come out ready to play. We've got to fight fire with fire. You know, what is it about the defense of Miami that's now allowing you and Marcus Tuiasasopo to really move the ball down the field through the air? Well, we've confused them with some formations, but they've got good coaches. They'll make some adjustments, and I don't think that uh, we'll have as open a guys in the second half. Doesn't mean we won't try, but we've got to try to control the line of scrimmage. We've got a, a lead. We've got to see if we can pound out some first downs, see if we can get this 30 minutes to get over fast. It also appears that your defense has been able to confuse their offense, and the crowd has gotten into it. They've got some problems there. We've got a 12th man here. Hopefully, they're going to be ready to rock and roll in the second half. Rick, All right. see you in the second half. They've certainly rock and rolled in the first half. 
21 to three. The Huskies, they got on the board after recovering a fumbled punt by Santana Moss. Braxton Kleeman on the option for three yards for the touchdown. Marcus Tuiasisopo, a 13-yard gallop over several defenders. And then he found his tight end, wide open in the end zone. Those are the three touchdowns for the Huskies. The Canes could only answer with the field goal. 21-3 is our halftime score. And John and Terry will be along from Times Square Stadium when we return after this. Brad Nessler and Bob Greasy, you and I about two hours ago talked about the tale of two quarterbacks. One's a young guy, one's a senior. The senior's got the best of it right now. And, and the young guy's on the road in front of a hostile crowd, and it shows that he needs to settle down. What we said that uh, Washington wanted to do was time of possession. They've had the ball nine minutes more than Miami has. And for Miami, they need to settle down. They, each possession, they've had the ball six times. They have not had it more than six plays on any of those possessions. And the only, uh, any, only time they scored with a field goal it was because they had blocked a punt and got the ball in the 28-yard line. So they have done nothing offensively. Here's the high short kick again taken by Jones coming to the near side. Got a nice block, cuts outside, and Daryl Jones a nice return to the 39. Lynn Swan talked just moments ago with Butch Davis about what his team's got to do. What do your team have to do to get settled down and get back in this ball game? Well, offensively, we got to have some success and continuity, putting some drives together. We got to, we hit on some things early, running the ball, and we've got to be able to build on that. Defensively, we got to negate the big plays. We were playing really good defense, limited all the things, and gave up a couple of big pass plays that really swung the field position. Obviously, you can't turn the ball over. Your quarterback Dorsey, does he have to settle in and be a little more effective? Yeah, I think so. I think, you know, I think, you know, Kenny was maybe looking for too many big plays and not necessarily taking some of the easier throws. He's just got to be efficient. I think he'll do a good job. Thank you, Coach. Took a little easier throw there yeah, on I, the first snap I and like got 16. That. I like that. Uh, Larry Coker, the offensive coordinator, knows his guy's a little shook up. Probably talked to him for a long time and just got him something going, something easy. Uh, you know, last week was big plays. Then this week, let's get something going. This is tougher opponent. This is a nice spot to be in. One play into the third quarter at the 44-yard line of Washington. Jackson counter, nothing. Hit by Daryl Daniels. Our Morgan Stanley Dean Witter first half statistics. And there's what Bob was talking about. 1949 time of possession. Yeah, go to the bottom, though. Over nine minutes and the two turnovers for the Hurricanes. Hurricanes only have seven first downs and and Washington total yardage 200 yards Miami only 73 second down a full 10 here comes a blitz they pick it up this time and he finds his hot receiver across the middle of the 39 Andre King for a pickup of five nice job by James Jackson picking up the corner blitz. Yeah, that time it's this is something they picked up. You won't see the corner coming, but from the left side, this is one thing that Washington got. The corner blitz sacked him a couple of times and actually caused the turnover. They got that corrected at halftime. I know it's early in the third quarter, but this is a big, big third down for the Hurricanes. Ture Butler in as a nickel back, and Miami's going to come over to the sideline. Going to take a timeout. Probably a personnel timeout. They didn't have the right people, and Miami was coming to the line of scrimmage. Timeout with 13.25 remaining in the third quarter. 21 to 3, the Huskies out in front. Huskies defense. Heard all week about how good Miami's defense was, but they're showing up today. Daniels, the middle linebacker, low the corner out there. There's a big hit. That's Von Tour on a corner blitz. That was one of those turnovers. Tim Hundley, the defensive coordinator, doing a nice job of mixing things up. Shutting Miami out touchdown wise in the first half. They'll take those four sacks too. They felt like they should have had about six against Idaho. They only had three last week, but so they have seven sacks in a week and a half, and they only had 13, which was last in the Pac-10 all of last year. Yeah, but this this uh, Washington team had five takeaways and a block punt. 
last week. So right. they're in a best, a, an aggressive group, and they're showing it here today. Here's the third and five for the Canes. They're only one out of six on their third down conversions. Quick throw complete and stretching out ball loose. Getting back on top of it for what looks like a first down is Ivan Mercer. They may have lost it when he fumbled it. Looked like he lost the ball behind him. One of the Husky players rolled over the top and he reached back for it. A lot of this is going to depend on the spot. Right. I think he's got it. Yep. Okay, there you go. I was going to ask you to make a call on that one. <laughs> <laughs> nice call. Third critical third down situation. I think the timeout that uh, Washington took uh, that ball was out before yeah, he, he was down it. and he was lucky to get it back and lucky to get it back in the spot he got it back Dorsey out to the fullback and riding his way down to the 25s McPartland and he gave Curtis Williams a little lift pickup of about eight second down and short so another, Miami's working it down the field another nice play getting the ball to your backs if you can throw the ball to your backs and you're tied in McPartland right there 35 the fullback you can move the ball down the field forget about the wide receiver those are big play guys you hit your backs and tight ends you can move the ball down the field at the 25 second down and two opening drive third quarter for Miami straight give off the left side here comes Jackson James Jackson he's got a first down out to the 16 Akbar and Lowe drag him down from the secondary Pick up a 10 best run of the day for James Jackson. Jackson one of the Doak Walker candidates over 2000 rushing yards only three other guys have done that at Miami led by Otis Anderson who's the top rusher in school history. He comes out. Omari Lowe still down on the field after the tackle of Jackson and they can't lose a corner yeah, right they now. They can't afford to lose a corner. They. Uh, they lost. They were thin coming in. Rod Green, one of their corners they expected back, uh, is academically ineligible. Well, that doesn't look too good no, for Amar Lowe. He had a back problem uh, coming into the ball game and They're, has played very well. Looks like they're heading straight to the locker room with him. They are not going to the sideline. They're heading to the tunnel. See if we can see. Hmm. I think Hard it's to his, tell. I think it's his back. He had a back problem coming in, and uh, I think he just re-injured it. Seventh play of the drive for Miami. First down for the Canes. The Huskies 15. Dorsey pump fake now goes to the corner to Moss. Not enough real estate, but a flag is down. Anthony Von Tour may be called for pass interference out there. Von Tour has had six interceptions over a period of nine games. He is a very aggressive cornerback. I think they're going to say it was not a catchable ball, so they're waving it off. We, our microphone is, we can't hear the referee up here. I think that would have been catchable. Offensive pass interference. Offensive. Oh. 15 yards, previous spot. Still first down. Well, now we got the refs, Mike, working, and the uh, Hurricanes working against themselves. I don't know. I couldn't tell. All I could guess is that Moss wrapped his left arm and kind of threw the corner down as he went around him. So that makes it first and 25. Back at the 30. Three wideouts and Dorsey from the shotgun. Play fake in trouble. He's got to get rid of that thing in a hurry because Jeremiah Farms just brought the farm. Yeah, well, that didn't fool anybody. A little fake draw going the other way, and it's supposed to be like a little option on Farms. Well, Farms is one of the better players on this defense. He said nothing doing. Had a free shot at Ken Dorsey. Tim Huntley, the defensive coordinator, said it's time for Jeremiah Farms to lift his game up to another level I think he has so far today second and 20 comes the corner ups and down he goes got tangled up with either his center or his guard and never had a chance 
may not have had a chance had he gotten in the pocket. There's just something about playing on the road. Everybody is unsettled. The quarterback's a little unsettled. The right guard, you can't see it in the right guard in the center. You see it more in the quarterbacks and the skill players that have to carry the ball. But everybody is just a little bit off, a little bit on edge. That time he stepped on Darcy's foot. They've had some miscues today. They don't want another one here, and they'll take a timeout for the third and 31. Dorsey calls timeout. I don't know if... I don't know if that's a good time to kick a timeout when it's third and 31. What's the difference between third and 31 and 36? <laughs> that's a good point. They need to get down to the five yard line either way. They need just they just need to get in the field goal range. Right. And Marcus Stuyasasopo trying to stay warm on the sideline because he definitely was warmed up in that second quarter especially. 11:36 to go third quarter. Timeout. The crowd spent so much time cheering during that timeout, they had to take a break. They're back on their feet, third and 31. Blitz coming. Screen pass, Jackson, couple of blockers in front. Whoa, what a hit at the 30 from Von Tour. And Kelly's there as well. 11.20 to go in the third quarter. Full house at Husky Stadium watching the number 15 team in the country shellac number four Miami so far 21 to three and now the Hurricanes who had something going had an offensive pass interference call against Santana Moss that negated what may have been a drive for a touchdown and now they're going to have to try to settle for a field goal and it's 47 yards out it's into a little breeze too for Todd Severs. and it's blocked the Huskies got it. Everything going right for Washington. Larry Triplett blocked the field goal. The Hurricanes had a good drive going. Take a look at the top of the screen. Right here is going to be the interference on the uh, the pass interference that took the Canes out of field goal range or out of touchdown range, really. It looked like Moss just took his left arm and threw him down. I don't see it from there. I don't either. I didn't see it on that side. And a moment ago, 47-yard field goal attempt was blocked by defensive captain Larry Triplett. Huskies take over, kind of maybe back to the line of scrimmage. That's about it. William Joseph made the stop on the Husky fullback. Here was Severs trying to line up from 47, but right in the thick of that was one of the biggest guys on the field. Triplet. And the block kick. That's a happy guy. Second down to 10 for Marcus Tuiasasopo and the Huskies offense on the option. Now a pitch show, not a good one, but it's handled by Paul Arnold. Yeah. Larry Triplett, the guy that blocked that field goal, and don't think that these Huskies don't know a little bit about history in the series between these two teams. Going back to 94 and sharing a, a national championship in 91. This is a big game for us, you know, and uh, we're not playing it just for ourselves. We're playing it for, you know, Huskies that played here in the past. So it's almost like we're having a part of history right now. One of the first guys that met him coming off the field was Steve Entman. He was a pretty good football player. Yeah, he was. Third and 14. Tuyasa Sopo all day to throw across the middle finds Wilbur Hooks. And Hooks across the 20 to the 21. Nice hit by Leonard Myers from the corner. And it's a punting situation. Tuiasa Sopo just doing, giving it a chance, trying to make a first down without turning the ball over. You don't want to help the Hurricanes. They, they're having trouble on their offense without helping them along, so don't try and help them. There's a guy that can change the momentum of a game in a hurry. And that's what the Hurricanes need. They need a big play from their special teams or their defense. They blocked one punt of Flemings today. Off the side of his foot is this one. A terrible kick. This thing might go out of bounds before the 30-yard line. That 
punt may only net him about two or three yards. I'm sure it's been talked to him all week about don't kick it straight to him don't kick a line drive. He says I don't know what happened coach. He kicked that one right off the side of his foot. And the Hurricanes are going to have great field position after a shank punt. They still haven't spotted the ball. I'm just trying to find a line of scrimmage so we can tell you how far that thing went. It went nine yards. 30 yard line. And the Canes right back at the 30. They were here a few minutes ago before a blocked field goal. Now Jay Davenport now the tailback in the eye. Both special teams not doing very well. Blocked field goal and then a poor punt. Here's that option pitch to Davenport. He gets tagged out of bounds after a pickup of four by Hakeem Akbar. 9.05 to go in the third quarter. Swanee's got an injury update for us. Yeah, it's on the Mari Lowe. Uh, he was hoping that the Husky offense would stay on the field, which would give him a chance to get some fluids in them because he just cramped up. Which means, Bob and Brad, <laughs> well, no, if it he didn't was, you know up. what I mean, uh, pickle no. juice. That's right. Should have been drinking the pickle juice and he wouldn't have cramped up. We didn't think there'd be any pickle juice around here. Swanee started a nationwide phenomena with that pickle juice thing in the pigskin classic a couple of weeks ago. Dorsey throws into traffic, incomplete, intended for Daryl Jones. Curtis Williams and Anthony Von Tour right there to break it up. The learning process goes forward for the young quarterback from Coral Gables in the University of Miami. They haven't aimed it at Moss too much, Bob. No, they haven't. They've thrown three balls towards uh, Moss. And he's got one catch, and he's not even on the field right now. The ankle we saw him hobbling on earlier in this game that kept him out of for the most part the entire second half against McNeese State in the opener is obviously something that's hampering him right now and it helps to hamper this Miami offense. Watch for a blitz here. You've got eight or nine guys in the box. Third and six. Dorsey kind of throw it out to Jones. Kind of a one hopper. They showed blitz and dropped out of it. Dorsey was a little shook up threw it a little early. And this receiver was stumbling around out there. This defense is doing a nice job. So they're going to try a field goal again. The last one got stuffed at about the same spot on the field, only from the opposite hash mark. Miami wants to take another timeout. Man, they are going to need some help at the end of this game if they somehow can get it close because they're down to one now. Hurricanes are rattled in a hostile environment and they trail 21 3. Field goal attempt is out the window. They're going to go for it here on fourth down at the 26 yard line. I like that call. Should have maybe done that earlier yeah. today. Three wide outs for Dorsey. Going to roll away from the pressure throw on the run and he got his man for a first down at the 18 yard line. Pick up of eight. And I like check in in New York with John Saunders. John. Right here on the Burger King update Oregon and Wisconsin Wisconsin with 24 yards on the ground at halftime early in the third quarter Michael Bennett breaks free and the sprinter speed won't catch him 59 yards for the touchdown Wisconsin on top 7 6 right. Badgers playing shorthanded. Here's Davenport and the big fella bangs his way inside the 15 to the 14 yard line with eight and a half minutes to go third quarter here it's 21 to 3 Washington Marcus Tuias Sopo a touchdown pass a touchdown run and he also pitched to his tailback for a three yard score and there he sits on the sideline his team comfortably in front but it's getting a little more uncomfortable he hasn't had the ball but three plays yep. here in the second half second down six Canes at the Huskies 14 in motion toward the ball. They'll go straight ahead. McPartland close to the 10. Jeremiah Farms in on the stop. Got a flag down. Don't forget uh, double header coverage coming up tonight. Many of you will see 
Florida State and Georgia Tech. The rest of you, Colorado and USC. A couple good games. Just when Miami gets something going, they do something that hurts. Yeah. Especially on the road when things are tough anyway. You don't want to stop yourself with penalties. And uh, remember, last time they were down here, they got the offensive pass interference. Illegal call. block in the back on the offense, 10 yards from the end of the run, still second down. And that one does just about the same thing. But you see, Butch, you got to use your head, right? Look at this, right there. I mean, the run is to the inside, and Moss comes down and blocks the defender back into the inside. It's just, it's something the receiver wants to get a piece of him and help, but you guess you got to say no. I he turned his back. Second and 13. Here comes a blitz. Yes. Dorsey lobs it to the corner. Touchdown. Holding yes. on is Reggie Wayne. They threw that fade a couple times last week to the opposite corner of the end zone. This one he lofted out. For his 6-1 wide receiver, yeah. and he came down with it. Yeah, they threw it to their favorite guy, and they're working on the true freshman, Derek uh, uh, Johnson. Number 21 is a true freshman. He's playing because Von Tour is in with cramps in the locker room. Great catch. Great, Great concentration. Shot. Whoops. Derek Johnson tried to strip that out. Yep. Reggie caught that twice. We'll give him two touchdown catches there. Good, uh, good catch there. So Miami right back in the game. They're going for two. Trailing by 12. Down by 12, hoping to by 10. Dorsey goes down, backpedaling. Second time today that's happened. So there goes a wasted two-point attempt, but they cut the lead to 21-9. Twenty one nine but no two point conversion Bob look right here look at the right foot of the quarterback and the left foot of the right the left guard right guard step on right there right here and that's what happened it's happened a couple of times uh, Brad it happened yep. at a critical time there they were going for two points and one of you, one of your linemen I don't think it's always been Bibla I think it might have been some others but but, but it, it, is it the quarterback moving too slowly. I think sometimes it is, but I think most of the time it's your offensive lineman trying to get a step. When the ball snapped, they're moving their foot. It's a false step. They drop back, and they catch one of the feet of the quarterback. I bet you it was always Larry Little's fault. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or Langer I, or somebody. And when, I, when it was, I said, boy, you guys are quick. Uh, <laughs> uh, so the Hurricanes have cut it to 21 to 9. Derek Johnson, Rich Alexis back waiting on a the kick. They're going to fight over it a little bit. And it's Johnson from the 12. No, nope, I beg your pardon. It's Alexis from the 12. And the Huskies will go back to work on offense after we remind you college football on ABC Sports is brought to you by Dodge. In a perfect world, everything would be different. Morgan Stanley, Dean Witter. Move your money, get well connected. Burger King. Got the urge and Nortel Networks. We're building the new high performance internet. You look in from the lake and into Husky Stadium. I don't know if that's Bob and Flo's boat right there or not that we were out on the other <laughs> yeah. night. That was a nice boat. Sure was. First down at the 25. Tuyasa Sopo in trouble and they got him. Wrapped him up. Quincy Hips was the first guy there and then he got help from his friends. Marcus Tuyasasopo hasn't done many things wrong in this football game. Both with his arm, hooking up with Elstrom, then with his feet from 13 yards out for a touchdown. And then to Stevens, his tight end right before halftime. That's what he's done so far today. Just got sacked a moment ago, but pretty good numbers. Completed his last six, 148, and a touchdown. He's got second down and 12 here with an empty backfield. Now he's completed seven in a row. And here's Stevens in the open field. The big fella rumbles all the way out to the 49-yard line. A 26-yard pickup to his tight end. Gets away from the linebacker. Here he is right here. He's just going to come down, break to the outside. Right there, it's just a missed tackle. The linebacker should have stayed inside. There has a corner help on the outside. Big play. 
almost to midfield. First down for the Huskies. On the option, pitch to Alexis, the freshman. Open field inside the 40. Down the sideline. He's going to go. Touchdown, Washington. The true freshman, Rich Alexis, from Coral Springs, Florida. And he just made his hometown team, Miami, a little bit sadder. 50-yard touchdown. They only have two players from the state of Florida on this team, and they're both from the same high school. John Paul II, there's some happy folks there. 50-yard score just like that. Anderson, the kicker, is the other one. Here he comes. Is from, <laughs> from that high school. <laughs> he missed it, though. Hooked it to the left. And I think they have a receiver on the sideline that's being recruited here today from that same high school. Well, the recruits that are in here are seeing... An eye opener. The option. A quick toss. Good blocking on the outside. And Alexis, a true freshman with speed, scores quickly where Miami took forever to score their touchdown in the second half. They talked so highly of this young fella and said, you know, maybe he's the answer somewhere down the line. Well, he's sure giving them reason to think about it. No, he's not even listed on the depth chart. They list three or four running backs, and you still don't see the name Alexis. But they said, you better put him on there. Played only one season of high school football. He missed nine games as a senior last year due to injuries. And he has just splashed on the Husky Stadium scene. Dan Morgan trying to load up on the fluids. His day's far from over, but his offense is going to have to help because now it's 27 to 9. And that's why that was there because the Hurricanes were trying to shut down Tui Asasopo. Take it out of the quarterback's hands and put it in somebody else as well. That somebody else just had a big score. Kick is deep. Five yards in, Andre Johnson will not bring it up. Bob was talking about how the Pac-10 has made some statements we mentioned earlier. Third ranked at that time, Alabama fell to UCLA. Penn State got crunched by USC in the kickoff classic. Wisconsin leading Oregon, Colorado, USC. A lot of you will see that one later on tonight. And Ohio State's got to go out to Sun Devil Stadium to play Arizona State. But they went 7-0 and in the first couple weeks. Did the Pac-10 against non-conference opponents. And right now, Washington looking to add to it. Hand off. There's a little bit of running room. Clinton Portis. I like Clinton Portis. Yeah. He's got a little shake and bake and a little uh, zing to him. And he's got a first down, too. Portis, as Bob talked about last year, 500 yard rushing games which was a freshman record and he had one last week yep he could be the quickest guy to a thousand yards in Miami running back history there's pretty good names on there you talk about the Chuck Foreman's and the Otis Anderson's and the Edgerton James and those guys there's a missed pass that Daryl Jones is still looking for right between yeah. his hands they're just a little off still a little bit off the combination they had it they, they were hot last week let me show you here. Here's the corners go to blitz. The corner's up in the. They see it coming. See the corner blitz. Now what he sees, he's going to hit the other receiver before the defensive back gets there. Just, just a little timing problem. Not connected. When are they going to hook up with Santana Moss? Second and ten. Draw play. Opening. Here's Portis in the open field. Across a 50, 40. He might go. Got one man to beat. He won't get there. As Omar stayed with him but a great run by Portis he is their home run hitter he is and he ran just like that last week he had a big 82 yard touchdown run against McNeese State and uh, Omori Lowe he must have had some pickle juice on <laughs> he got in there got some of that juice and he came back out good blocking at the point of attack 61 yards later for Portis you know it's going to be hard for Butch Davis to not play 
Portis because he is make something happen. You're absolutely right. First and goal. Davenport in now at the tailback spot. Here's a stretch play to him. Najee Davenport. Touchdown. Just like that. The That's hurricane impressive. score. That's impressive. And that quiets the crowd for the first time almost all day. I think that's the first time I haven't seen Rick chattering into that uh, headphone. <laughs> he, he told us he's a chatterbox. He said, I never shut up in that thing. He says, uh, he says Lou Holtz walks and I talk. Yep. And here's <laughs> not Jay Davenport not walking but rumbling to the corner. Got a nice block from Nick Partland. And that helped free him on that side. And they're going to go for two again. Three wide outs. Look for the blitz here. Jones in motion toward the ball. That's who he wants to go to, but he had to force it. And it's scooped off the ground by Farms. So there goes two points that they could have had had they taken kicks. It would have been a 10-point game, but that's hindsight. It is 27-15. Well, the Hurricanes have to stop the Husky offense. The Husky offense hasn't got on the field much this second half and when they did they were three and out on a punt and then they took it very quickly for yep. a touchdown. They got a pass play to Stevens their tight end and then Alexis on the next snap went 50 yards for the score. Well, Miami's got to be feeling a little bit better. Now you start to think that uh, this thing might turn into a little bit of a shootout 12 point game 523 to go third quarter. And the Hurricanes know, as you see Dan Morgan there a minute ago stalking the sidelines, that they've got to stop that guy. What Miami needs is a three and out and get the ball back. It's amazing. We had a forecast of 64 degrees and probably rain, and we've had more sun than we've had anything today. Yeah. So you're up here in the great northwest. The weather can change. Very quickly. I know I shouldn't even say that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're trying to bring some rain. Seavers set to kick the scoring drive, 80 yards and four plays, and most of it was Portis, 61 yard gallop. The best thing for Dorsey is a running game. Derek Johnson going to let this one go. Goes out of bounds. Oof, he cut a break there. It almost didn't make the end zone, and it finally took a left. And they'll bring that out to the 35. Coming up next Saturday on ABC, regional action. Some of you will see a classic Big Ten, Pac-10 matchup as the Wolverines have to travel to meet the Bruins of UCLA. Other games include North Carolina and second-ranked Florida State. And Rick Neuheisel makes his return to Boulder as these Huskies take on Colorado. That's next Saturday, 3.30 Eastern. Check your local listings for the details. Get all your games on pay-per-view by calling your local cable or satellite company. And as Marcus Tuyasasopo huddles his troops and brings them out on the field, they'll have a first down at their own 35-yard line. Miami starting to put it together in the second half. But they have not stopped uh, Tuyasasopo yet either. Two tight end set for the man they call Tui. Here he is on the option. And the late pitch to Arnold. And I thought he stepped out of bounds, but apparently not. Kept his footing out to the 44-yard line. I thought he was going to tiptoe out at about the 38, but he planted that thing and cut it back up the field for a couple extra yards. The one thing you want to be wary of if you're a Husky is the fumble on the option. They led the conference in fumbles last year, and every time you pitch the ball, and like he's doing right there, you uh, take a chance of fumbling the football. A couple senior captains letting each other know they're both on the field. And yep. Morgan said, Marcus, I'm still here. Yep. But a pickup out to the 44 of nine, second and a yard. Conniff. He ran into a convoy led by Morgan and Hips again. Let's check in with John and Terry at Times Square Stadium, guys. Brad, we told you about Wisconsin grabbing the lead on Michael Bennett's 50-yard touchdown run. Well, this time, 75 yards, and again, breaking tackles, taking it to the end zone. 75-yard touchdown, Wisconsin now with a third team leading it 20-9. to 
you know, one thing about Bennett, you give him a crease and you yeah, can he, say, I'm a track guy, goodbye. Yeah, he's a track man. He's a little faster than Ron Dane, although Dane was surprisingly quick. Yes, he was. Here's Alexis who went 50 yards for score last time. There's a flag flying into the fray. This might be a holding, which would negate a first down on a third and one. That one flown in the general direction, at least, of holding. And it is. Nebraska in overtime has beaten Notre Dame. Wow. Whew. Well, we can officially say Notre Dame is back and good for Bob Davey. Yep. Must have been a dandy. Holding on the offense, 10 yards, spot of the foul, still third down. So a near upset in South Bend and here at Husky Stadium in Seattle, there's one in the making. Number 15, Washington, leading number four, Miami. 27-15 the score with 4.20 left third quarter. Brad Nessler, Bob Greasy, Lynn Swan with you in a packed house at Husky Stadium where they have done just about everything right except that last play, a holding on a third and one's a no-no. Now they've got third and 11. Here comes a delayed blitz. Tuiya Sopo in trouble. Marcus is going down. down, lost the ball. Look out. The Canes trying to scoop it, and they do. Dan Morgan's got it at the 16-yard line. Just mentioned the fumbles. There's a flag. Penalty marker at the end of the play. Rick knows that the only way that he can lose this is if he helps the Hurricanes by dropping the ball. After the play was over, dead ball, personal foul. On the defense, half the distance, first down. So you add insult to injury there. Tuya Sosopo talking with New Heisel. He lost the handle. Let's take a look. He's looking downfield. They have a blitz. He's trying to make something out of nothing. There is a, there is a time to put it away and go down. The Hurricanes get on the ball, and I think that's the foul right there on Silvers, number 68. The late hit. And Morgan, the linebacker you see, cover it right there. And then they tack on the half the distance, and it's down to the eight-yard line. Talking about the, the fumbling, leading the conference in fumbles. There it was. Reggie Wayne to the top of your screen. He's their fade man if they throw, but they'll keep it on the ground, and it's James Jackson. Touchdown. Just like that, one play can turn a game, and Jackson scores from eight yards out. How quickly things change on turnovers. And now Miami and their morale and their momentum is back. They, think they, can, they think they can come back and win this game. Yes, they do. That's Wilkins, 72. He's looking for somebody to block. There is nobody. Seavers, extra point is up and good. They'll just take the one there. Quit worrying about those two-point conversions, and they make it a five-point ball game. 27 to 22 on James Jackson's eight-yard touchdown. And again, it followed a turnover. The second half kind of starting to belong to Miami now. In the second half, first it was Dorsey lobbing one out there. Reggie Wayne caught it twice as he bobbled it. Alexis came back, 50-yard touchdown the first time he's touched it today. The freshman takes it all the way to the end zone. Back comes Najee Davenport. He'll score for Miami. Then after the turnover, Jackson on the counter, cuts inside a moment ago. And all of a sudden, it's 27 to 22. Big and plays, huh? Big plays on both sides. Big plays and turnovers. And it's kind of gotten into the way that Miami wanted to play it. Some big plays. Huskies wanted to slow it down. First downs, ball control. And they did in the first time. Time possession, and they did. And they were up by 18 points. They had a nine minute advantage in time of possession now they only have a three minute advantage plus when you score in five seconds after a turnover yeah. you don't need much time yeah. of possession and that's what the last scoring drive was Seavers kicks Johnson will let it go again that's back to back times now that they have taken over on a penalty at the 35 yard line John and Terry in New York at Times Square Stadium guys Brad, the Irish had a tremendous day, but just came up short. They grabbed the lead on a field goal in overtime, but Eric Crouch was his third touchdown rushing on the day, and Nebraska escapes South Bend with a 27 to 24 victory. Brad. Hey, you, One you, of those guys, Eric Crouch, uh, much like Tuiasa Sopo uh, here, talk, he just does it all. You tell me about the best 
quarterback in the country, the all-purpose quarterback, all around. Give me Eric Crouch, and you can have anybody else you want. <laughs> all-purpose, run and pass. I might take this guy under center at least as a close second, or in the top five anyway. Only about a yard for Braxton Clement, maybe not even that much. Damian Lewis involved in on the tackle. Coming up Thursday, ESPN's coverage of college football continues. Mississippi State will take on Lavelle Edwards' Cougars from Provo. Coverage starts 7.30 Eastern with college football tonight, presented by Gateway. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. Mike and Kirk and Lee will bring you all the action Thursday night at 7.30. Good for Lavelle Edwards. Uh, glad to see him getting things back squared away. Last year for Lavelle. Overtime win last week. Today they were fighting with Air Force. High pass intended for Elstrom. And he almost had his head taken off down there. Let's check in with Swanick. Oh, Brad, this is a Sears National Championship trophy, and the way the top teams are playing across the country today, I don't know if it's a, a football or a hot potato. You know, the wind of change is happening, and speaking of wind, there's a strong wind that's been blowing throughout this ball game from the far left corner right across the field to the near right corner. And with the, court, with the quarter coming down to an end, 2.59 to play in this third quarter, the Washington Huskies are going to lose a favored win in the fourth quarter. Good point. They lead by five, but they've got a third and ten in an empty backfield behind Tui Sopo. Marcus, quick pass over the middle is tight end. That's been his yeah. ace in the hole all day long. They got him with formation. They got him with a formation. Fifth catch for Stevens for 79 yards today. It's what Rick Neuheisel told Swanee going into halftime that we outformationed him a little bit. Here's the tight end. He's going to come straight up the field. You've got guys spread all over the field. Nobody's there to cover him. Out to the 49-yard line for the big 6-7 tight end. And a first down. Well, this is about the spot on the field they gave it to Alexis. He's not in there. Just the fullback is. Let's see. A rollout by Tuiasa Sopo. He throws well going to his left, sets up, and fires this one nowhere. Again, the new rule in college football is a, the, the quarterback, if he's outside the area of the tackles, can throw the ball away, but he has to throw it to or past or beyond the line of scrimmage. He did both. He did both. <laughs> he got made sure it was beyond. Maybe he was out there in the and I think track. It's a, I think it's a good rule change. They, they almost did it last year, and uh, Dave Perry, the, the head of the Big Ten officials, uh, got it through this year, and I think it's a great rule. I do, too. Second and ten. Again, Conniff's going to clear out that backfield. Marcus running out of time, drills it down the middle, flags down in a couple different spots. There's one on the near side, and there's one nearer the line of scrimmage. There's one in the defensive secondary and then there's one like where there might be holding or offside. Chuck McFerrin will let us know after he gets done conferring with the other officials. And we don't know because I don't think they do yet. I think it's going to be a there are two fouls on the play, holding of an eligible receiver on the defense. That penalty is second foul is pass interference on the defense. <laughs> All right. 15 at the previous spot. First down. Huskies just looking for the better of the two. And Bush Davis can't believe it. I got to call it on Myers. I guess he was the one that was the deeper of the two downfield, where one flag flew into the secondary. The other one, as we said, was more around the line of scrimmage or in the neutral zone. Well, both of them were on Miami. Yep. So either way, it's first down. And you're exactly right. That's the key. So Dan Morgan looks to the sideline, makes the call on that defensive huddle, and the Canes defense knows they've got to slow down Washington to give it back to their offense. Exactly. And the Huskies need to stay on the field and get some points to get the momentum back. Tuiasa Sopo now changing things up. The home, team, the home team can check off. Yeah. <laughs> Here's a pitch to Willie Hurst. And he goes down. And it's Chris Campbell, the outside linebacker, who made the hit. Campbell, who stepped in last year for the injured Michael Smith and ended up starting nine games, and he's had a pretty good outing today. 
He has. The, the Hurricanes returned eight starters to this defense, all four of the defensive backs. The guy that's not there, it would have been the ninth starter, is Nate Webster. He was a middle linebacker and drafted in the first round of the NFL draft. And uh, he changed his mind and, and couldn't keep his eligibility, right. so he had to go on. Like you said, if there wasn't fax machines, he'd still be playing. Yeah, he, he faxed. <laughs> he faxed it in there, and then he's, whoa, yeah. I, I didn't mean to do that. Give me, pull that back. You can't pull that back you through the phone line. Couldn't pull it back. <laughs> you got to go. 144 remaining in the third quarter. You know, I was talking a second ago about Marcus Tuyasasopo checking off at the line, and in Greasy's glossary, we had a long talk about this last night, these check with me plays and all of that. Tell us about it. Well, there's there's a lot of different ways to check off, but but in the huddle with a check with me, the quarterback will call two plays. He'll call one to the right and one to the left. And then when he gets to the line of scrimmage, he'll select by looking at the defense which direction he wants that play to go. So the team at the line, they know that it's going to be a check off, but all they're listening for is which direction. For instance, we're going to either go run toss 38 straight, which is right play, or toss 39 straight, and I'll let you know when I get to the line of scrimmage. Up to the line of scrimmage they come just outside the 40 where it's second down and 14. Conniff will be in motion out of that backfield. They're going to throw it that way. He's open. But Wide open. Sosopo threw it low and behind him. Maybe tried to hurry that a bit too much. I think Marcus' eyes got big and he tried to get it out there too fast. Yeah, this, this is one that got away from him. This receiver, Conniff, he's going to come right out here and he's going to hook up. And watches when he throws out there, and nobody near him. Or he could have caught it and maybe run 10 yards. Yep. But uh, it was a, it was good. It was a good, uh, good planning, poor execution. So now it's a three wide receiver set, all to the left side. Saw the third down passing for Turias Sopo. Marcus uh, third and 14 here. Has plenty of time. Down the middle, got his man. He's going to get another first down. On third and 14, he got 15 to Justin Robbins. I think they found themselves a pretty good wide receiver in freshman, true freshman Justin Robbins. Out of Olympia, Washington. Justin hasn't even been to class yet. They don't go, they don't start <laughs> school around here until the end of September. Look at the protection. Nobody is there. And the guy on the other end is a guy that Rick Neuheisel calls the natural. That's what he calls Justin Robbins. Had his first career catch last week, and he's starting to put it together today. Three catches all for first downs. Here's Tuiasa Sopo on the keeper, and Morgan drags him down. The two seniors going head to head, pickup of about two. Talking about Justin Robbins, his high school coach is Danny Green, who was a wide receiver for the Huskies here back in the 80s. Remember him. Nice little combination there. Sometimes that pays off. The connections help. And there's a kid that got him a big, big first down. Well, they needed some receivers to step up because going into the year, Todd Elstrom was the only receiver that had ever caught a pass. Yep. Second down. Final half minute of the third quarter in what has become now a close and exciting game. It was all Washington at one point. And timeout taken by the Huskies. So they're down to two. Miami. Actually, both teams each with one timeout remaining as Morgan comes over to talk to his head coach. We talked about 1991 with a little bit of history between these two teams. January 1st was a big day in 92 as Don James Husky squad went to Pasadena. Billy Joe Homer a touchdown pass. And the Huskies finished off the Wolverines while Gino Toretta led the Hurricanes down the field on the first possession. Canes never looked back, had a 22 to nothing win. And those two clubs ended up on top of their respective poles. And so they can argue forever about that one. In fact, at that time, I remember Sports Illustrated come out, came out and said, OK, let's get these two teams together and we'll play them. They did one of those computer things, which didn't mean anything. <laughs> they would have rather gotten together on the field than they did in 94. And that's where the long winning streak snapped uh, by Miami.
Canes, of course, won four national championships. I think it was uh, uh, 83, 85, 87, or something like that. They won every, the odd years they right. won. Yep. 85, 79, and 91, or something like that. Dominance in the late 80s and early 90s, yes. and then you mix in Washington in 91. And both teams have had to go through NCAA sanctions, and you got to give these programs credit for the last decade to put it back together. Both these coaches, New Heisel came in last year and has done a great job. And, uh, and, and Butch Davis, what a great job he's done. It took 31 scholarships away from him. His program is down. Now it's back to where it was. Two oh. yes to Sopo. Play action down the middle. Oh, nice play by Mike Rump. And now they got a flag. Yeah. I thought he played around it, but I guess he played through it. And I think Butch Davis just said that's unbelievable. Looked like a pretty nice play from the junior from Delray Beach, but. It'll be apparently an interference call that's going to give the Huskies another first down. Well, let's, let's take a look. It's going to be to the left, top left of the screen. Oh, man. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe just an instant before it got there, I guess. He didn't get him with his left hand. If anything, he may have bumped chest. Yeah. He bumped him with his chest. No way. But it. Uh, I mean, I don't know how the official, I don't know how the official on that side could call that because he, he was blocked out by the body of the defender. Not to mention, we had it in slow motion and it was pretty much instantaneous. That's a, that's a pretty tight call there. They moved the sticks. It doesn't matter what we think. That the is officials, the eighth penalty. Officials are from the Pac-10. Mm -hmm. At the 13, first down. Rich Alexis, the freshman, is back in there at the tailback spot. For the Huskies. They lead 27 22. Knocking on the Canes door again. On the option, Tuiasa Sopo's got a crease. And he put the ball on the ground, and his head hit the ground too, but it's a dead ball inside the five, a pickup of about eight. Mike Rump just knocked him on his rump. Actually, knocked him on his head. Marcus is going to feel that one tomorrow. But he'll take it because it's down inside the five and they're going to switch ends. 15 minutes to play between number 15 and number four. ABC Sports presentation of college football will continue after this message and a word from our ABC stations. The Huskies would like to put it right near that pylon right now as they start the fourth quarter at the Hurricane four yard line. With a five point lead, the Huskies trying to put it on the Hurricanes again. Willie Hurst, did he get there? Not quite. To the one. On the first play of the fourth quarter, it is now first and goal. On the run by Hurst inside the one yard line. So the Huskies just that close, two feet away from putting another touchdown up. That's a big, experienced offensive line up front. Silvers, Fraze, Ben, Ward, and Call. This thing's been a 13 play drive, Bob. Four seniors and one junior in that offensive line. Three tight ends, Conniff the fullback in front of Willie Hurst. It's Conniff, touchdown! The old junior high and high school teammate battery. Tui Asasopo, the handoff to his roommate and buddy Conniff, the fullback for the touchdown. It must have been a pretty good high school football team. <laughs> Woodenville High. I think they weren't too bad. So they needed some insurance and they just got it. Well, they cap a 65 yard drive. Exactly. They came back and answered. Miami has scored three touchdowns on their last three possessions. Extra point. Up and good. 30 seconds into the fourth quarter. It's the Huskies leading by 12. Sold out Husky Stadium in Seattle watching a shocker take place as the hometown Huskies in their 81st year of playing here have a 34 22 lead on the number four team in the country. Rick Neuheisel's Huskies ranked 15th. Butch Davis team came in ranked number fourth their highest national ranking in six years. 
And a young quarterback named Dorsey has found the sled and tough in the great Northwest. And the Huskies just added another touchdown to cap a 65 yard drive. And now here's the kickoff. It'll be fielded by Johnson. And he only got to about the 24 yard line. And Lynn Swans with an old friend on the sideline. Thank you, Brad. Coach Jim Lambright, there's a lot of football left, but you were the head coach when Miami was upset and you stopped that 58 game home winning streak. This game today bring back a lot of memories. I'll tell you, it sure does. So what a what a great start for a Husky team that that needs a sort of a win to establish a new coaching staff with the, with their players in a national sense. Coach, what will a win like this do for a program? Uh, a win like this adds to your reputation around the nation. Everybody knows that recruiting is the name of the game, and you have to be able to recruit in Miami, Florida. All right. Rick Neuheisel said when he took this job, before he took this job, he called you and he called Don James and said that if you were going to take the job, he'd have to have an okay from the two of you. And he did just that, and uh, he has my total support. He's doing a great job. Coach, thank you very much. Hey, thank you. Jim, a good man, good coach, yes, longtime sir. assistant oh. before he took over for Don James. He's here around 29, 30 years yep. he's been associated with this school. Here's McPartland, the fullback. Looks like he's got a first down. Sarah's right now, blue. Miami not trying to do it in huge chunks. They know they've got plenty of time to work, but they need points on this drive probably. Well, they need to answer. They need to come back and do something with the ball. They've got the wind at their back, and uh, they, they had the momentum, and they just got it stolen away from them a little bit. But... Uh, this seems to be an offensive second half. The defenses have been very quiet. Your man and our, my man back in the backfield, Portis. Three wide out, so for Dorsey as the sun breaks through. Here's Portis. And he almost broke through, but a flag flies in. And if this is a holding call, that's going to back him up. Penalty against the Hurricanes. There's never a good time for a penalty, but they sure had some untimely ones today. On the offense, 10 yard penalty, spot of the foul. Near the conclusion of our game, we'll select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team. Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. So this will back it up inside the 25 now. That's eight penalties for 81 yards against the Hurricanes. And we just started the fourth quarter. First and 20. Santana Moss has been a non-factor ball loose. Fumble recovery by Triplett, I think, on the bottom. That'll mean he'll have a blocked field goal and a fumble recovery today. That big guy's not giving up that football. Dorsey just never had control of the snap. Then you set back. Now you're going to be a pass rush. The linemen try to get back quicker. The quarterback tries to get out of there quicker. It's a sure passing situation. And the ball is free. The lone returning starter on that defensive line from last year, Larry Triplett. And he's just come up with his second big play of the day. So many things go into making up of a football team. you got to have good players. You got to have talent, but you also you got to have discipline and you got to have character. And you got to have experience and there's so many things that come and evolve through the course of a, a ball game. It's like a war. Washington takes its final timeout, but they do have the lead 34 22. 13 14 remaining in the ball game. There's a big defensive captain who we talked to after practice on Thursday Larry Triplett very personable young fella and the lone returning starter on their front walls had a block field goal and a fumble recovery the one a moment ago is giving it back to the offense just inside the hurricane 25. Willie Hurst had a little bit of an opening four yard pickup Damian Lewis brought him down with help from Ed Reed. Butch Davis, I think right now, Bob, knows that he's got to hold this team to a field goal or less yeah, right here. Yeah, if, if, if they get a touchdown, they're going to be down, uh, well, they'll be down 19, maybe 20 points. And yeah, that's three score, three touchdowns is too much. I think I think if asking for his offense to get two might be all right, but uh, the defense needs to step up here. Second down, 
Long six. They got single coverage on the outside of both receivers. They go to the option and they go straight ahead with Conniff and he got very little. Well this is just the first of a big college football Saturday coming up tonight second half of our day night doubleheader on ABC. Some of you'll see Chris Wanky in Florida State against Georgia Tech. Others will see Colorado take on number 12 USC. That's tonight at 8 Eastern 5 Pacific. Check the local listings for details or get both of those games on pay-per-view by calling your local cap uh, cable or satellite company. Dan Morgan directing that defense. They've got to stop Marcus Tuiasosopo and company on a third and seven. Marcus with time got hit as he threw and it's intercepted by Morgan. And Morgan coming back the other way. So those are the two seniors that have been going at it all day. Chris Campbell with the hit on Tuiasosopo and Miami gets the turnover they desperately needed. Campbell from over here. Going to get some pressure. Just as he tried to throw. Just enough. Just got there in the nick of time to knock the ball off its line. And Tuiasa Sopo had a chance. He had a receiver in the end zone that could have made a play. And Bob, there's a late hit, right? A little push right near the end of that uh, personal foul on the Huskies. So you take the turnover and you attack 15. And all of a sudden, you got the Hurricanes doing business out. Past the 40 well, yard line. That's what that's what Miami needed. They needed a, the defense to step up with a turnover. And now they're back in business. They can they can uh, two scores and they're they're back in it. I may have said past the 40 yard line, past the 30 yard line at the 34. Here's the counter. Davenport running straight ahead. Uh, Portis rather. And Daniels with the big hit from his linebacker position. So we're down to 11 and a half minutes. Washington trying to pull the upset leading 34 22 as the Huskies have sort of controlled things all day long but now with the interception by Dan Morgan it's given the Hurricanes new life if their offense can find something here we're going to have a ball game right down to the end. Nowhere to run for Portis. Yeah, of the three backs for Miami that they've used today it seems as though Portis has the, the, the most big play. Uh, ability with the speed he's already done it one time today he did it last week and I think that's what he's looking for he's not taking it up in there when nothing is there he's looking around to try and bounce outside and the Hurricanes All-American wide receiver Santana Moss all he's doing is gathering Moss so far today they have not been able to get him unleashed he's in the slot to the left on a third down and seven Dorsey Looks one way, comes back the other, and it's incomplete. Intended for Jones. And Miami not happy with itself, and neither is their sophomore quarterback, you can tell. Going to have to give it up again. Well, Miami knew, Butch Davis knew going into the season that he was going to be very thin at quarterback. He wanted to go to his tight end, came off of him and went the other way. Quick snap to Capshaw to kick before Derek Johnson really got in position, but he makes the catch anyway at the 22 and goes down immediately. As Andre Johnson got down there on the special teams to make the stop. Well, 10-23 remaining, 34-22. Ten twenty three to play in the ball game. Thirty four twenty two it remains and the Huskies now take over after Miami had nothing but a three and out the last time they touched it. A waste of an interception by Morgan. Tuya Sosopo surprisingly to me to throw. Now he's got open field he won't throw it. Got a first down. Probably would like to have stayed in bounds but he'll take it out to the forty three an eighteen yard gallop. See that's the extra dimension. I was talking to Greg Schiano, the defensive coordinator for the Hurricanes, and he says, when we play a team that doesn't have an option, I save myself six to seven hours a week in extra work. <laughs> and when, because you're, you're really playing 11 defensive guys on 10. But when you have a guy that can run the option and scramble like this, he has to work harder, and it's like 11 guys against 11. And he's working on another one of those 300-yard total offense days if he keeps going in this direction. First down. Just outside the 43. 
Marcus quick throw outside. Oh, what a catch. Wilbur Hooks hooked that one. The thing looked like it was flying out of bounds and he caught the back end of it pick up a four and we're down to ten minutes. Nebraska held on to beat Notre Dame in overtime. Number two Florida State you'll see them against Georgia Tech on many of these ABC stations tonight Michigan rolled on rice big time. See some of the other scores of games continuing here we've got 34 22 and we're under double digits 935 to go flags on the play to Sopo on the way and again a penalty marker at the line of scrimmage. Just great ball handling and deception on the part of the Huskies running the option. Every hurricane was in there trying to tackle the, to the fullback. They thought the fullback had it. Blades number seven jumped inside. You, against options, you got to play assignment football. You got to stay outside. If your read is tackling the fullback, you got to tackle it. If you got to take the, the quarterback, you stay in that lane and you got to take the pitch. You got to stay wide. You got to stay wide all the way along the line of scrimmage. Well, the sad thing for Marcus and the offense is it was illegal procedure on that penalty that I called and they'll bring it all back. Oh, Brad and Bob, what I found really interesting was Rick Neuheisel was talking about how they do not want to coach Tuyasa Sopo out of running the football. You get so many of the young guys who can run playing the quarterback position and they want to fight against running it so they drop back in the pocket and say, I'm not going to run, I'm not going to run. You know, because of his situation, they encourage him to run, but be smart about it. A second down 11 now. Marcus over the middle, got it to his tight end again. He just keeps sliding it in there to Jeremy Stevens. Let's check in with John Saunders in New York. Brad, Ron Dane has taken the Heisman and moved on to New York, and they may forget about him in a hurry. Michael Bennett. Touchdown runs of 50, 75, and now 83 yards doesn't go into the end zone for the touchdown, but right down to the one, which sets up a run by Bollinger. Wisconsin has grabbed the lead again. 272 yards for Bennett. Right. Wisconsin has got to be the favorite in that league uh, this year. Uh, the one tough game in a couple weeks over at Michigan. Well, I don't know if they can get that far undefeated with all the people they have to keep out, but they're doing it so far against a Duck team that's hanging in with them. Conniff a little crossing pattern picks up a big big first down. The old Woodenville connection Marcus points at him. He's all right Rumi you're buying pizza. We've been doing this for a long time since eighth grade. I think the Hurricanes got to be a little bit concerned about their defense. They didn't play well last week against McNeese State and certainly uh, well, the Huskies have 34 points on the board and and they're moving. The Miami offense would like another chance but right now it's the offense of the Huskies in control. First down at the 45. Just got the play off the throw a dangerous one. Oh boy. I'm telling you Ed Reed would have grabbed that one yeah, forget about it. exactly Reed was in a position to make a play. They had he had to get rid of the ball. Take a look from uh, from behind now he's got to throw right now because a defensive man he didn't have time to throw to check to see if there's a defensive guy over there he just threw it hoping that there wasn't time permitting stay tuned for the thrifty car rental post game report with John and Terry we've got eight minutes 11 seconds remaining here a second down and 10 for the Huskies. Tuiasa Sopo stands in, lofts one, ricocheted, and again, the defense gets at least a hand on it. Reed was in coverage, and that stops the clock. That's back to back times now. The clock stops with the incomplete passes of Tuiasa Sopo. You know, you'd think they'd be running the football and just taking time off the clock because. That's what they, they've got plenty of points. They just need time off the clock. But I think what they're trying to do is move the ball any way they can. And uh, and I think Rick has confidence in uh, Marcus that he can throw it. Well, they can play a little bit with a 12 point lead. I'd go back to that option. They ran a little earlier though. They got tall bat on his penalty. Blitz coming. Screen. First. Nowhere. Morgan got him first and then got help over there defensively. And they're going to have to give it up now. 
And remember how many times can you punt the number six before he makes something happen. The well, Moss hasn't done much today. Nothing. Taking him out of the game. As you know they played against some other good punt returners around. Remember David Allen yep. from Kansas State. And they had Ben good. Kelly up at, uh, at Colorado. Colorado. Yeah. Well, how about the kid Northcutt last year in, from Arizona. in uh, Adelta O'Neill from California. Now he's with the Broncos. So it's not the first time they've seen a good punt return. Uh, this they take a lot of pride. They said this is their Cadillac of their special teams this punt team. Now it's been an Edsel today. The last punt went nine yards <laughs> for <laughs> Fleming. We'll see what I happens. Set you up, partner. Oh low snap. He got a rid of this one at least. Santana open field at the 20. Made one man miss. Nice coverage. And it's Akbar down there to make the hit. Uh, he's, he's a starting free safety. Elstrom right there. Stevens, they all start. Miami's got it back with just over seven to play. The Dell Game Solutions, you said they had to stop Tui Asasopo, and they haven't been able to. No, they haven't. Uh, he's kind of uh, had his way with them. Uh, and for Miami, Santana Moss, only one, one reception, and it's been tough going for Ken Dorsey. He's got his hands on it again anyway at the 25. Dorsey, quick drop, slant, in and out of the hands, almost intercepted. Reggie Wayne had it. And then it was almost taken off the top of the turf by Chris Massey. And he had him, too, and he knows it. Dorsey knows it. Here's a receiver outside. He's just going to run a slant. There's going to be a lane right in here where he's going to throw the football. Right there, he just threw it too high. He could have caught it, maybe done something with it. Dorsey's only hit two of his last seven, but in that case, as there's been a case a couple times, his receivers aren't helping him. Second and ten. Screen pass. Portis, if he can keep his footing, had one blocker. Broke another tackle. Midfield. Look out. Look out. One man to beat. And it's Akbar. Portis got the corner. He's going to go down the sideline. And knocked out of bounds inside the ten. Ran out of gas. He ran so hard. He had to run so hard to get out of the way of all the eight or nine defenders. He eventually ran out of gas. We said he was the guy that could be a big play performer now, for him, and he's silenced the crowd. This guy has made big plays. It's a little screen pass. And all this stuff right here takes it out of you. Now he's got to run around and then down the field. Needed some pickle juice about right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh. He's going to stay in. Miami now threatening. 59 yard run by Portis. Here's the throw. Incomplete. That's a tough day for Ken Dorsey. Even that screen pass he just completed to uh, Portis was a little off. He had to make a good catch. Yep. He's throwing the ball too hard, going to quick. But the thing that he is doing, and he's young and he's going to learn, and he's got a tremendous upside. The thing that he is doing is even all the bad throws are not intercepted. Right. He hasn't had a pass intercepted. He's thrown the ball 29 times, no interceptions. Looking for another touchdown with his team down 12. They'll try to do it on the ground. Here's a nice convoy for Portis, but it's stretched out beautifully, and it's Madavi, the linebacker. Ben Madavi, who's a big hero against Idaho with a fumble return for a touchdown and a block punt. And he came up with a nice defensive play there. Yeah, Portis is saying, hey, I need a break. I need a break. And, 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 and there's Madavi, number 41, stringing it to the sideline. Fullback last year, linebacker, punt snapper. The Canes need a touchdown. Najee Davenport's checked into the backfield. It's Moss and Wayne. And Andre King has the three wide outs. We got singer coverage at the top. Third and six. Two down territory though. Dorsey hit as he threw. Santana Moss was open across the middle. I don't even know if that's where he was going with the ball. Farms got him in the arm. Yeah, he was going. Moss was coming across. He wanted to get it to him. He just got hit. Watch him get hit right there. I think he was looking to get hit. He didn't hit him that hard. Yeah. I think he was expecting and looking. I think they got this young sophomore rattled a little bit. This might be the ball game for Miami. It's fourth and six.
Dorsey to the corner of the end zone for Moss. Did he get it? No, he's out of bounds. It was remarkable that he even got to the football. Well, that's a tough throw and catch. Going to try Moss to the deep corner of the end zone. So you got to throw it over. I don't know. Can we run? Can we see that again? Whether he got his feet in? Hey, what? He kicked there up some go. dirt, didn't he? His right foot is out of bounds. His right foot He's lands catching. out of bounds before he drags yeah. the left. That's a good call. If but he, if he would have raised his right foot and caught the ball, his left foot was still hanging in. That was a phenomenal grab, even though it was out of bounds. And, a, and it was a tough throw. He had to throw it over the outside corner. If Miami doesn't get a turnover, this thing might be over now. So we check in with Swanee. Well, guys, I think Santana Moss has had a long day and certainly give credit to the Huskies secondary and their defensive line for putting the push on the quarterback. But he came into this ball game with a bad ankle and he has not been able to run, make the kind of cuts he's capable of. Certainly on that play, if you've got two strong ankles, zone, you can get on your tiptoes, get up on the ankles like you're talking about, Bob, and make that catch. But when you can't and you have to rely just on one good wheel, those are the kind of catches that an injury stop you from making. Yeah, he's going to see that on replay and go, oh, man, that was a matter of an inch or two. Tui Asasopo hit as he throws. Stevens, a tight end, all wrapped up. Morgan comes over there to help Reed. They do a nice job of bringing down the big tight end. We're under five minutes now. Behind the quarterback, he got a little blitz right in his face. I tell you what, one of these defensive backs is going to start gambling a little bit. Reed was right there. If he would have tried not for the safe tackle, but for a big play and cut in front of him, he may have been able to make a play. Yeah, that's been close now in the last two series by one of the DBs, one of the better DB groups in the country. At least most people say that. And it's third and twelve, and Marcus Tuiasosopo has got to be cognizant of that fact right here. Can't make a mistake. And he's in trouble and he throws and it's intercepted. Al Blades, part of that secondary, the guy they call Little Blades, has the turnover. I don't know why with four minutes to play, you just you just you, just, you don't you don't want to throw from your own end zone. You're pouring gas on a fire at this point. And in this case, Marcus got burned. Here's Blades over here, number seven. Going to be a blitz. 44 is Morgan. You got heat up in the kitchen. You got to get out of there. No, 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 no. Reggie Wayne to the near side. This is Jackson on a cutback run. And he got only to the line of scrimmage. Marcus just trying to do too much. The play is over with. Give it up and come back for another one. No, no, don't do that. Oh, my, my quarterbacks. I'm, I'm feeling for my quarterbacks. <laughs> I can tell. Oh! <laughs> you, know, just, you know, it comes from you, you work on those plays in practice, and you work, and they do well, and you and you don't want to give up on them, but you have to give up and go to the next play. Single coverage down to the right side, and it's Reggie Wayne. They love him. A fade. On a fade. But it's Dorsey on a handoff to Jackson. Jackson bullying his way toward the end zone. Pick up a five. Clock continues to be a factor now. It does. It does. They need to score as quickly as they can and not fool around. And here is their. They take another timeout. That's their final timeout. That's it for Miami. Yeah. They used up those timeouts early on. Well, they know they can ill afford to blow a chance here, but they're down 12, and we've only got 3:11 left in the ball game. Now, Bob, I'm wondering. I mean, we're talking about Ken Dorsey being a young quarterback, getting down in these crucial situations. If you were in the ball game, if you wouldn't have just spiked the ball here, saved the timeout immediately, because you've got to manage this clock, and it's one thing that only experience can give you. But would you not have spiked the ball in this situation? Well, that would have made it fourth down, though. Yeah, it would have, and you only give you one chance to get in there. I don't, I don't know. You got to remember, this kid's a young quarterback, and I'm sure they've. You know, and he's on the road, and he's his eyes are getting a little bigger as the day goes on, and he's throwing the ball a little quicker. He's expecting to get hit, so 
He's had a tough day. I don't want, I don't think you want to ask him to do too much. What I think what they should do is get him outside the pocket a couple of times and, and let him let him be closer to his receiver out here, and then he can throw or either run the ball in. I know one of the things they talked about in this ball game was the rain, hoping it might have rained a little bit. I think maybe the wind may have affected him more because in the game today, I've noticed that he doesn't have quite the arm strength that the Tuyasa Sopo has and can cut through the wind. He's kind of a guy who's relying more on touch, and the wind has affected much, many more of his passes this afternoon. Well, he's been off, there's no doubt about it, Lynn. And the wind does blow pretty good in South Florida, but he, uh, I think the wind has affected him. And he's just, I, I don't think he's stepping in. I don't think he's following through. He's not comfortable. You know, he's just, but this is a tremendous learning thing for him. And, and he's got two more years. He's got three more years. He's got this year and two more years at the university. And he's got a big upside potential. Here's the learning curve continuing at the three yard line. Third down and goal. Canes need a touchdown. Play action. Throw to the corner to Wayne. Tried to make an acrobatic catch. There are flags down. Anthony Von Tour got tangled up with Reggie Wayne, and it might be first and goal now. Let's wait and see. All of a sudden, with 72,500, you can hear a pin drop in this place. Wayne almost made that catch. Holding of an eligible receiver by the defense. Automatic first down. First and goal. Von Tour, 23. There's the hold right there with the left arm. Yeah, good call by the official. And Von Tour, you know, took a chance. And, you know, the worst thing it is they move it to the one yard line. So the Canes need to score and need to score quickly so they preserve some time. James Jackson's a tailback just outside the one. First and goal. He gets the call. He is close, but not in. Keynes are saying touchdown. The officials are not agreeing. Now they say touchdown. You see the linesmen on the the guys on the end of the lines have to call the touchdown. The umpire can't call it even if he's standing right over the guy and he knows he's three feet inside the, the end zone. And if you're blocked off, you're a linesman. You come in, you got to wait till you get all the way in there so you can see him and find him. So now the extra point by Seavers upcoming to try to make it 34 29. Hurricanes need the ball back in a touchdown to pull off a miracle anyway. So an extra point here. Uh, Bob Brad after that touchdown was scored and from where I was standing on the Husky sideline it was obviously a touchdown but from the time they decided to call it a touchdown a good six seconds had rolled off that clock to add <laughs> insult to injury. That might be what they've yeah. held play up here for to reset it. We'll wait and see. Yeah that's probably what they're talking about Len. And and what 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 uh, Butch Davis is thinking about is do I onside kick or do I kick it deep I have no timeouts left if I kick it deep and all Washington would have to do was make would be make one or two first downs and they could run out the clock. So here's the extra point coming up. And it's up and good. Thirty four to twenty nine. All right. Maybe it's because I hate two point conversion attempts. But do you realize this game could be 34 to 31. Now that's that you know what it could have should. No, they did the right thing back then when they were down by 12 points. You're down by 12. And the little chart says when you're down by 12 go for two. Somebody's got to burn that chart. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. College football on ABC Sports brought to you by Chevrolet trucks the most dependable longest lasting trucks on the road. Bud Light for the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down. Make it a Bud Light. BF Goodrich Tires take control. And Valvoline Max Life, the first motor oil formulated for higher mileage engines. Well, the engines have been running here. And there's no ivy growing on these two teams either right now. 34 to 29 in a shootout, 252 left. Well, the Huskies have their good hands team on the field. They've got 10 guys up uh, expecting an onside kick. Conniff, the starting fullback, and Lowell, the starting corner, where a tight end. Yep. Stevens, the other tight ends on the other side, so is Elstrom. So there's guys that handle the ball a 
lot just on the front wall. And have, have been playing this whole game. So they're warm. Oh yeah, they're warm and they're, they're into it. Just to add a little bit of drama, Seavers had the ball blow off the tee and he's got to reset it. At college football, you have to have at least four guys on on both sides of the ball. Now in the NFL, you can have a lot more, but there's six guys on one side and four on the other. There you see them in their track stances. Here comes the onside straight to Stevens, a line drive in the gut at the 45. That might be his biggest catch in a career high day. He'd already caught seven passes. That's the biggest catch of the afternoon. Yeah, he didn't though. hit that good. What he wanted to do was top the ball, top the ball and get it to take a huge bounce. But he didn't hit it good. You want to hit the very top of the ball. Line drive, Jeremy Stevens. We'll make that, we'll give that to him as his seventh catch of the day. So now first down, and as Bob said, Miami's out of timeouts. So are the Huskies for that matter, but they're not that concerned about it. They lead by five. And now they keep it on the ground and they lose a yard. Willie Hurst. And the clock becomes their ally. They'll bleed this for all it's worth. What they've got to do is hold on to the football. The 25 second clock doesn't start until the official waves his arm. So you can figure about 35 seconds for each play after after the play is stopped. Mark is taking all the time he can. Second down and 11. There you see the play clock in the corner. A little bit of option. He'll hold on to this one and then try to get down. Two minutes left in this one. Let's check in with John and Terry at Times Square Stadium. Brad, Joe Harrington trying to lead back Oregon in the waning seconds here. They need the touchdown. Jamar Fletcher dives up, grabs it. His third interception of the game and then runs out much more of the clock before finally being tackled as Wisconsin leads it 27-23. Michael Bennett, 288 on the ground. I guess Jamar Fletcher played this game. I guess he did, so I guess he's going to sit out Northwestern and uh, he's Cincinnati. Miss, maybe, yeah, he's got to miss three of the first four games, and this is the one he played. Well, it picked a good time to play him, I guess. Tui Asasopo on a third and five, and that'll be fourth and five. We're going to be down under a minute the next time they snap it. And it looks like we're going to have an upset in Seattle. A little over a minute left. In the ball game, Marcus Tuyasasopo talking things over with Rick Neuheisel on a fourth down upcoming. A sellout crowd has come out here in full force today, in full voice as well, and that certainly helped the cause because Miami's Ken Dorsey, the young quarterback, was rattled on many occasions, partly by that sound and that noise in this stadium in a hostile environment. And Miami has had to be swimming uphill all day long because of that. And what they're what they're booing about is the injury to Miami, which stops the clock. Yeah, that's why everybody's booing right now. Marcus Tuias Sosopo smiling on the sideline a little bit. He's had reason to. This was his 13-yard touchdown run in the second quarter that helped give his team a commanding first-half lead. Stevens, we talked about Jeremy Stevens. Touchdown pass also in the second quarter. And Tuias Sosopo, this one was called back, but he's had some bright, bright moments today and a great day total offense-wise, as has been the case so many times. As I said about an hour ago, maybe he'd be on his way to 300. He's pretty close. And now he's pretty close to one of the huge, huge wins in this program's history, at least in the Rick Neuheisel regime. Yeah. As we mentioned earlier, this there's a lot of optimism around uh, this school, this campus, this football program, and uh, it's it's because of Rick Neuheisel. And the officials now say timeout Washington. I thought they were out of timeouts. At any rate. It is timeout with 28 seconds remaining. Today's Chevrolet players of the game. 
Clinton Portis who really gave Miami a lift with some of his long runs and got them back in this football game. And of course Marcus Tuyasasopo whose numbers you just saw in recognition of their efforts Chevrolet will make a thousand dollar contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. You're going to see a lot more number 28 in that backfield for Miami. I think so too. Uh, you know it takes it takes more than good one good running back uh, so they'll all get to play. And what can you say about uh, Tuiasa so far? You know, I said at the opening, he was he was not a great passer, but he was an outstanding football player, and I think you saw that today. And I think in time he could work into being a great passer uh, when he gets to a pro team that works with. Him. But they're not they don't do that here, and that's that's not their thing. And this kick will go in the end zone, so that won't waste any run back time. And Miami will have it at the 20 with 20 to play. And Miami things will not be easy for them especially now having to come on the road in this one which looks like it's going to be a loss at West Virginia at Rutgers Florida State. <laughs> well it's Florida State but that's home <laughs> Virginia Tech and Syracuse they haven't been able to beat since Butch has been there. Well they haven't beaten uh, Florida State either. Right. They? Yeah they're 0 10 against 10 those against, three. Yeah. Against uh, yeah. So they don't have any home games in September. But here we go. Ken Dorsey. Time running out. He's going to load it and air it down the sideline. Incomplete. Intended for Reggie Wayne. You know, I, I'm a little bit surprised that there, but Reggie Wayne was covered one on one, and he could have caught that ball, and the defensive back could have fallen down. I'd, I'd do that two more times. Yeah. Now to 12 seconds about two chances left for Miami and if the ball stays in the field of play they don't even have two. Wayne Jones and Moss is three wideouts. Rolls to his right wants to go to Moss going deep overshot everybody and it's almost intercepted back there by Akbar. And now there's one play left. Butch Davis team came in ranked fourth in the country. They're four seconds away from taking a 3,000 mile plane ride back home as an upset loser to Rick Neuheisel's upstart Huskies. And maybe this Husky squad should be the favorite in the Pac-10. Well they are along with USC but they don't play the two schools don't play so they're going to have to do it without playing. Final play. Three receivers out there. Dorsey going to throw it as far as he can. There'll be a jump ball. And it's pulled down by Miami. But it's all over. Rick Neuheisel's got one of the very, very big wins in his young coaching career. And this is sixth season. This one's going to taste pretty good at home. Butch Davis troops will have to regroup now. And let's go to Lynn Swan with one of the heroes of the day. Marcus, this has to be one of the biggest victories for you. You did nickel and dime them. You came up with some big plays. Hey, I'm, I'm proud of our defense. They stepped up. We gave them a couple, Miami a couple chances to score at the end of the game. I'm happy for them. Hey, guys, just battle. That's what I love about these guys with the Huskies. Miami played a great game, and we were fortunate enough to win. Thank you. Yep. There's your leader, the lead dog of the Huskies. Final score 34 29. So it's an upset. Number 15 picks off number four. For Bob Greasy and Lynn Schwann, I'm Brad Nessler. ABC Sports is online at bcsfootball.com. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports continuing the tradition of excellence.